a service of KIVMRadio.com, the Internet's home for an all-old time radio. plans and what is she doing she is standing in the middle of the room exercising vigorously with a pair of dumbbells Irma, why have you suddenly decided you must lose weight well Al says when you travel you should travel light <laughs> honey he didn't mean it that way now how about helping me look through these travel folders so we can find a place before our vacation's over huh all right Jane say this sounds nice really uh-huh. let me read it a vacation paradise. This panoramic picture of breathtaking beauty cannot compare with the food at McGivney's Seafood Palace in the heart of Rockaway. <laughs> oh, no. Irma, this is the front cover of a menu. Oh. Honey, this isn't finding a place for us to go on our vacation. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hello, Irma. Hello, Richard. Hello. Oh, Jane, have you and Irma decided where you're going on your vacation? Not yet, Richard. Oh, good. I have a wonderful plan. You know, business is sort of quiet this time of the year, so I thought if Al could make it, he and I could join you. Oh, Richard, that's wonderful. Well, uh, I, I don't know about Al. I don't think he'll go unless he can pay his own way. Well, fine. But if he pays his own way, he can't go. <laughs> about it, Irma. Al will be bunking with me and it won't cost him anything. Oh, Richard, you know you're a darling. I could hug you for that. I'll take you up on that when we go for our first canoe ride. <laughs> well, as long as you haven't picked a place, there's the uh, Hotel Del Mar overlooking the Blue Pacific, or if you don't want to go that far, there's the Moosehead Lodge up in Maine. The Moosehead Lodge? Mm-hmm. Oh, Richard, that's very exclusive. Gee, I, I know they'll take you, but I'm afraid Irma and I won't have a chance. Oh, I know they're a little snooty, but, but I'm sure that if you write them an impressive letter, you'll have no trouble at all. I'd write it myself, but I have a million things to do now at the office. All right, Richard, I'll do my best. Come in. Hello, Jane. Rich. Hi, you chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Hello, Al. Hi, Al. Well, girls, got the ideal spot picked for your vacation. Al, Richard has already found a place for us to go to. Yes, it's on the coast of Maine overlooking the Blue Pacific. And Al, you're going too. Oh, nothing to do. You know I can't afford, but I want you to be my guest. That's what I say. I can't afford to pass up your offer. <laughs> well, we all agreed. I'll run along. Oh, don't forget to write that letter, Jane. I'll see you later. Bye. Well, thanks to Richard, we can all look forward to a swell vacation. If you kids will excuse me, I'll go in the bedroom, get some of my summer things ready for the cleaners. Chicken, it burns me up. What do you mean, honey? The way you let Richard do everything. Is there any reason why I can't pick the police? Well, it's just that Richard wants us to go to a lodge in Maine. Yeah, I know his taste. Must be one of those swanky joints where you have to take a shower before they let you in the pool. <laughs> That's no place for a vacation. You don't feel at home. 
You go there for a good time, and someone comes up and asks if you care to join in a round of croquettes. You don't feel like eating them chicken meatballs. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of food do they serve? Little sandwiches cut in triangles. If you take more than 10 or 12, they give you a dirty look. <laughs> it's not that I want you, but why take chances spending good money for a snooty place? If you want the best advice on where to go for a vacation, you get it from one guy. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> now, got a problem. Want to get away from people, what do you suggest? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Sing Sing or Alcatraz? <laughs> you prefer Sing Sing? They show better movies on Friday night? <laughs> no, Joe. Want something less confined? Want a legitimate vacation spot? What you got? Alaska. Irma, how about that stuff? Oh, I read about that. Uh, isn't that where all the elephants go to die? Please. <laughs> Joe, how do you get a trip to a snazzy place free? You yeah, hold it. Don't want to discuss it on this party line. We'll call you right back for payphone. Goodbye, noble friend. Chicken, we'll be right back. Want to talk to Joe from the pay station downstairs. All right, Chloe. Chloe? Oh, uh, I just want to know... I mean, I just want you to know... i got to go where you are. Please, sir. We'll be back with a place to go. Oh, Chloe, i got to go where you are. Irma. Chloe. Honey. Irma. Huh? Have you seen my stationery? Uh, I want to get that letter off before... Oh. Come in. Tell me me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little telescopes. One far-sighted, the other with a collapsible head. <laughs> a little joke I picked up from an astronomer. <laughs> Why, Professor? Girls, have you got an extra comb, please? I'm in the middle of curling Mrs. O'Reilly's hair. Oh, sure, here you are. Oh, thank you. Janie, would you mind coming downstairs to Mrs. O'Reilly's room? I don't know whether I should make the curls large or small. Well, why don't you ask her? After all, it's her hair. This I know, but she's out shopping. <laughs> Tell me, did you and Irma decide where you are going on your vacation? Oh, yes, we're going to the Moosehead Lodge up in Maine. How about you, Professor? Are you planning on taking a vacation? Well, I was planning on it, Janie, but things didn't work out. Oh. You see, I was going to sublet my room to a friend of mine from Pennsylvania who was also taking a vacation. But when he came out to look at my room, he decided to have a better vacation if he stayed on the job. <laughs> what kind of a job does he have? He's a coal miner. <laughs> Tell me, Irma, what is Al going to do while you're away? Oh, Al will be with Richard, and they're both going to be at the same camp with Jane and me. And that's nice. Well, girls, I'll see you before you go. I must go back to my room now and write a letter to the district attorney. He wants to be notified of every crime committed. Every crime? Yes, Mrs. O'Reilly is cooking dinner for me. <laughs> Hello, Al, and goodbye. I'm just on my way out. Goodbye, Professor. Well, girls, we're all set. Joe found an ideal spot for our vacation. Now, just forget it, Al. I wouldn't go to any place that Joe suggested. Richard has started the wheels turning so we can get into the Moosehead Lodge. Well, if you kids will excuse me, I want to go out and buy some impressive stationery so I can write a letter to them for reservation. I'll see you later, kids. Chicken will not let that dame push me around. My mind is made up. Well, what do you mean, Al? Don't you want to go with us? Well, of course I do, Chicken. But since Richard is putting my bill, I want to make sure we, we get in. Oh, but Jane's going to write a letter. Do not have confidence in Jane. Need more sophistication. Chicken, you and I will write that letter. Oh, uh, Al, do you think we're doing the right thing? Sure, Chicken. Jane and Richard will thank us forever. Oh, Al, I like the way you make up your mind to do things at a moment's notice. You're so repulsive. Chicken, that's impulsive. Oh, what's the difference, Al? I like you either way. Let's pause here on KNX. Now for the conclusion to My Friend Irma here on KNX. the 
Ed Lodge asking for reservations for the four of us. You know, my conscience bothers me. I described Alan Irma as the perfect lady and gentleman. I know what's going to happen. Someone will say to Al, would you care to indulge in a little parcheesy? And Al will say... Parcheesy? By all means. Would you mind putting it on a cracker for me? <laughs> and as soon as we get to the Moosehead Lodge, someone will say to Irma, would you care for a nightcap? And Irma will say... No, thanks. I like to see bald-headed. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm glad the two of them are not here as I write this letter. I'm taking no chances on Al and Irma gumming up the work. So little Jane Stacy personally dropping this letter in the mailbox, special delivery. <laughs> She's not here. Good. Don't want her around making wise cracks while I'm dictating this letter for Moosehead Lodge. Got your notebook, Chicken? Uh, yes, Al. Uh-huh. Well, when you type it, uh, keep a copy. So we'll have a copy of what we said. All right, Al. Um, now, shall I say gentleman or uh, dear sir? Well, chicken, uh, we want to impress this lodge that we're swank people, so uh, use swank terms. Write, um, your highness. All right. All right. Uh, my dear your highness. Good. <laughs> We wish to make a reservation at your lodge for the coming semester for four people. Or, as you might say, a group of quadrupeds. <laughs> we wish to assure you that we are very high class. You got that, Chicken? Al, well, how do you spell your highness? <laughs> chicken, got to write fast. My mind is clicking. These creative thoughts come and go. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Al. I'll just say we desire reservations for four people. Well, uh, how will they know we're high class? Uh huh, I'm coming to that. New paragraph. I don't know how to spell paragraph. <laughs> Thinking you don't write, you just uh, zip it in a little. <laughs> oh, all right, Al. Okay, take this. Do not think that we are just common people. We have been to many swank places. We have been to England during the cricket shooting season. <laughs> Sojourned at Capistrano for a few swallows. <laughs> and shot peasants in the Everglades. <laughs> That we only shoot them in season so they'll know we're legitimate people. Good sir. Continue. As for our friends, we have mingled only with the best. I personally am related to Count Alphonse of Scandia. Of course, I'm only related to the Count by marriage, what you might call a blood count. <laughs> but almost daily rub shoulders with such intimate friends as bankers and authors and, oh yes, President Hoover, statesman, scholar, and incidentally inventor of the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, Al, you know everybody. Uh, yes, Jake. Now, uh, let us continue. We all eat with knives and forks, especially when we eat on the European plan. And I am sure that your mind will be a... Well, it's been three days since I sent that letter to Moosehead Lodge, and I expect an answer this morning. Irma, of course, is packing. Such packing you have never seen. At this moment, she is trying to pack a ukulele, which she informs me is waterproof. So being a normal person, I said, well, Irma, why would anyone want a waterproof ukulele? And Irma said, in case you get tired playing, you can paddle. (laughs) You know, Irma, I should argue with you on that, but it's just too ridiculous. But now, before I really blow my top, please tell me, why are you putting ice cubes in your hat? Well, you know, when you're on a vacation under the moonlight summer breezes, and you're with a man like Al, I may want to keep a cool head. (laughs) Oh, honey, forget about packing till we get that confirmation from the lodge, huh? Why don't you go see a movie? The two new pictures playing right around the corner. On Our Merry Way and Dream Girl. Oh, I saw them with Al. Oh, you saw them. What are they about? I don't know. When Al and I go to the movies, we never look at the screen. <laughs> well, then why don't you go out and get your hair fixed? Well, I can't. I, 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 I'm waiting for someone. Who, oh, Irma? Oh, it isn't important. You know, you've been acting strangely all day, Irma, running to the mailbox every five minutes. You expecting a letter? Oh, tiddly dumb. <laughs> That's a pretty good answer. Come in. 
buy a chicken any time of the mailman yet? No, Al. Maybe we should have sent a special delivery like Jane did. This chicken... Uh, uh, what else is no Jane? Just a minute. Wait just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> did the two of you by any chance write a letter to Moosehead Lodge? Hey. Uh, say, uh, tiddly down, Al. That always stops us. <laughs> Irma, let me handle this. Look at me, Al. There's nothing wrong, Jane. Okay? But then why are you and Irma looking at each other like that? Well, uh... You heard that expression, a person's face is their fortune? What about it? Chicken and I are doing a little bookkeeping. <laughs> Irma Peterson, answer me. Did you have the audacity to write a separate letter to Moosehead Lodge? Well, yes, Jane, but when you read it, you'll see that we will be admitted at once. Look, here's a carbon copy. Let me see that. Oh. Not only are we friends of President Hoover, but we have often been invited by the Vanderbilts to go yachting in their solarium and drink grouse. <laughs> Continue. The family of my fiancé, Irma Peterson, has spent a great deal of time abroad. And I can modestly say that my own family has done time in America. Chicken, I think Jane is getting a little pale. So what? You'll get a car back at Moosehead Lodge. Moosehead Lodge? Both of you must be kidding. Believe me, after this letter, if we showed up there, they'd have our heads on the wall. And I haven't worked like a dog for 23 years to end up a hat rack. Come in. Hello, girls. Hello, Al. Hi, Mrs. O'Reilly. Who, oh, Mrs. O'Reilly? Janie, this letter just came for you. Thank you. Well, girls, I've got to get back to my room. The professor curled me transformation, and now it's drying on the windowsill. And I wasn't want to get it inside before a bird builds a nest in it. <laughs> Is that letter from Moosehead Lodge? Yes. Well, why don't you open it? Well, what's the use? Oh, go on. Open it, Jane. All right. Dear Miss Stacy, we regret we cannot give you accommodations at this time as no reservations are available. Sincerely, Moosehead Lodge. Well, there goes our vacation in Maine. Do you know why? No, Jane, but go ahead. We're paying attention. Because you and Al took it upon yourself to write a ridiculous letter. What will Richard say? Well, we're sorry, Jimmy. Well, you're always sorry. You were sorry when you sewed suspenders on my brand new strapless evening gown. <laughs> you were sorry when you tied firecrackers on my hair because I said I wanted to see how I'd look with bangs. <laughs> Anybody. Tell me me again, Trapani. <laughs> but Jamie, you're crying. Well, I've got something to cry about. Well, someone must have shown you a picture of my room. <laughs> I'm only trying to cheer you up, Jamie. Tell me what is wrong. Well, Irma and Al. Irma and Al. Just tell me what we need. A doctor, a lawyer, or an undertaker. <laughs> A minute, Jane. I'll wait nothing. When Richard finds out what you've done, he will be ostracized. He can't do that. He's a citizen. Oh. Come in. Special delivery from Miss Stacy. Oh, thank you. Who's it from, Jane? Well, it's another letter from Moosehead Lodge. <laughs> They're probably suing us. Go on, go on, read it. What does it say, Jane? Well, it says. Your second letter for reservation signed Al, Irma, Jane, and Richard Incorporated <laughs> has so delighted our committee that we beg you to forgive us for turning down your previous request. <laughs> we feel that any group with such a sense of humor will give Moosehead Lodge that congenial, amiable atmosphere we so desire. And please give our regards to that great inventor, President Hoover. <laughs> Well, Irma, Al, they, 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 they like the letter. They want it to come up. Oh, Al, how can I ever thank you? Oh, don't thank me, Jane. The chicken belongs to credit. Well, Irma, how in the world did you ever work it? Oh, simple, Jane. You see, Richard had an idea in his head, and you had an idea in your head. 
Well, I had an idea in his head. It was easy for me because I could think I had nothing in my head. <laughs> you know, that's a bit of an understatement coming from the head of my friend, Irma. Irma and I are practically in tears. We're anxious to go, but we're going to miss all our friends. Aren't we, Irma? Yes, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Well, don't cry, Irma. Mm-hmm. After all, we're two very lucky girls to have so many wonderful friends. I know, Jane. That's why I'm so sad. Because you know what they say, next to a dog, a friend is a man's best. Yes. Come in. Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly. We, we just came to say goodbye. Thank you, Professor. And, girl, you know, I haven't got much money, but I'd like to give you a little present to take with you. Oh, how nice. Well, what is it, Professor? Mrs. O'Reilly. writers and production personnel take a well-earned vacation. My friend Irma will return to the air again August 30th. And will star Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Connery. Frank Bingman speaking. New York Skyline. Isn't it amazing to think that the Indians sold all of Manhattan for only $24? Yeah, isn't that silly? They could have gotten $1,000 for the Empire State Building alone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what you can expect when you listen to my friend, Irma. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. Why, another friend gets a friend for God. There's the will be hot. Beaver Brothers, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive Super Cream Blend, present... Our friend Swan with my friend Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. This is one of those days that make people say that New York is a great place to visit, but not to live in. Why? Because the temperature is hugging the century mark and the humidity is picketing your pores. (laughs) Irma and I are stretched out, gasping for breath on our patio. (laughs) You see, we like to think of our fire escape as a patio. (laughs) Jane! Jane! Oh, don't talk, sweetie. It's too hot. Jane, what's the temperature of the human body? 98 is normal. What's the temperature on the fire escape? Let me see. My goodness, it's 98. So what are we complaining about? Everything is normal. <laughs> well, ordinarily, I try to straighten Irma out, but it's too hot to argue. In fact, to forget the heat, Irma and I are playing a game. We're looking on the clotheslines around us and trying to guess what kind of people each line represents. For instance, um, over there on Mrs. Burton's line, there are two silk-striped men's shirts and five pair of boys' overalls. Story's quite plain. Mr. Burton is a big man about town, and Junior has to support the family. (laughs) Jane, I've got one figured out. Yeah? Yes, Mrs. Adams has two and a half children. (laughs) She has. Uh, How did you arrive at that? Oh, it's very simple, Jane. There's five stockings. (laughs) (laughs) A gold star for you, Irma Peterson. I suppose because there are two sunbonnets hanging on Mrs. Horwitz's line, she has two heads. (laughs) 
Well, she does keep to herself. <laughs> but gosh, Jane, isn't it warm? Yeah, it's just about the hottest day I can remember. Let's go back into the house. Maybe it's cooled off. All right, Jane. Oh, no. Just as hot in here. Well, I think I can bring the temperature down, Jane. Just give me time. Irma, what are you going to do with all those paper bags? I'm going to fill them all up with warm air and put them in the ice box and let them cool off. <laughs> oh, please, honey. Please. Isn't that any good, Jane? Irma, the next time we go out in the sun, promise me you'll wear a hat. <laughs> Gosh, I wish there was some way we cool off. And Irma, don't suggest that we put cold slaw on our heads. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. What will we have for supper? <laughs> Look, Jenny, if we really want to cool off, why don't we go to Coney Island and sit on the beach? Yes. Irma, if we were ballet dancers, we couldn't find enough beach in that crowd to stand on one toe. <laughs> oh, but Jane, there's going to be a contest and a parade, and the couple with the best personality gets a prize. Yeah, but honey, it's such a trek to Coney Island. Well, with Alan Richard, it'd be so much fun. <laughs> Richard at Coney Island. Honey, I don't want to make Richard seem snobbish, but the whole picture is out of focus. That'd be like asking Mrs. Vanderbilt to write a column for the Hobo News. <laughs> oh, but Jay, we have such fun at Coney Island. Al wins so many prizes, like when they try to guess his weight. Yeah, I know, Irma. Someday they're going to find that brick in his back pocket and they'll let him have it. <laughs> But not for a prize. Hello. Oh, hello, Richard. Hmm? Yes, of course I'm warm. How is it out there in your neck of the woods? It is? Well, it just goes to show you, even with a cool million, you can be hot. <laughs> you know, Richard... Jane, Jane, tell him about Coney Island. Irma, please, honey, I'm talking. Wait a minute. What, what, what Richard? No, ah, uh, no, Irma's just talking. But she, she has a crazy idea. And I mean, it's too ridiculous to talk about. I, I don't want to embarrass you. She, well, she thought you'd like to go to Coney Island. Isn't that silly? <laughs> you'd love to go. <laughs> you think it's a wonderful idea? Hold the phone, will you, Richard? I want some water. Now it's really hot. <laughs> You'll be here in an hour? Well, yes, of course, we'll be ready. Goodbye. Irma, did you hear that? Richard wants to go with us. Well, that's what I like about Richard. He's not high hat. I think for a Republican, he's very democratic. <laughs> now, I wonder where I can get in touch with Al. Well, finding Al may be a problem. Today being Sunday and everything closed, he's probably looking for a job. <laughs> Irma, what are you doing? I'm calling his hotel. Oh. Hello, is this the Hotel Lennox? It is? Well, I'd like to speak to Al. Huh? He's not there and you don't expect him back? Well, why not? Oh, the suitcase he left for security is full of old telephone books and all the sheets and towels are gone. <laughs> well, that's my Al. He never takes anything for nothing. <laughs> Goodbye. Now, let me see. Where else could he be? Now, honey, who are you calling this time? The movies. Uh, hello, Circle Theater. Uh, do you still do you still let children in for half price? <laughs> you do? Well, did the man walk in an hour ago on his knees? <laughs> oh, you threw him out again. <laughs> in what direction? Downtown. Thank you. Irma, don't bother telephoning. If you want to find Al, just hang a sandwich out the window on a string and he'll come flying in like a buzzard. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, hello? Is this a candy store? Yes, I'll wait. Honey, you're just wasting time. No, I'm not. This is the most direct way to find Al. You see, the man in the candy store tells the newsboy, and the newsboy tells the first taxi driver. Yeah, go on. And, yeah, and the taxi driver tells the other taxi drivers... And the first one that drives by the unemployment office tells Harry. Harry? Why doesn't he tell Al? Well, Jane, didn't you know Al doesn't wait in the unemployment line anymore? He has a stand-in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
Pretty soon he'll have a caddy to pick up cigarette butts for him. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Jane. Yeah, it's quite a way. Hello, is this the candy? Oh, Al, I've been trying to reach you. Where are you? In the telephone booth? Well, Al, I called to see if you'd like to go to Coney Island with us. You would? You'll be right over? Oh, swell, Alan. Thanks a lot for inviting me. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Jane, isn't he wonderful? I don't know what I've done to deserve him. Must have been something pretty horrible. <laughs> well, what bathing suit are you going to wear, sweetie? Well, yeah, I could wear that two-piece blue suit I wore last year. But I don't think it looks so good on me this year. Why not? You haven't put on any weight. No, but I lost one of the pieces. Oh. <laughs> Look, just wear your green one, huh? I'm sure that you'll look sensational. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Jenny and Alva, my two little gold chains. One with a charm, one with a missing link. <laughs> Excuse me, a little joke I picked up from an old pawnbroker. Why, Professor. <laughs> oh, Professor, isn't he terrible? Not in my room. Up there, it's just like going to the seashore. You can actually feel the moist spray blowing in your face from the broken water pipe. <laughs> in fact, if it didn't make me so sleepy, I would stay up there all day. Makes you sleepy? Yes, I also got a broken gas pipe. <laughs> Professor, would you like to go to Coney Island with us? Coney Island? Yeah, wouldn't it be fun to go to the beach, lie on the sand? What do you think is on my floor, a carpet? <laughs> oh, come on. Be serious, Professor. Irm and Al are going to Coney Island with Richard and me. Listen, you could take Mrs. O'Reilly. After all, it's about time you two patch things up. Mrs. O'Reilly, I wouldn't have anything to do with her if she was the last woman in the world. And by the looks of us, she must have been the first. <laughs> you know, it's too bad that Professor and Mrs. O'Reilly don't get along anymore, isn't it? You know, when he was going with her, he seemed a lot happier. I noticed that too, Jane. Every time she used to ask him for the ready laugh. Yeah. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, Irma. Oh, dear. Oh, Richard, you're a little early. I'm not quite ready. Well, Jane, I don't like to disappoint you, but I'm afraid I won't be able to go to Coney Island with you. Oh, Richard, why not? Business. One of my clients insists on seeing me right away. Oh, Richard, it's so hot today. I know, but business before pleasure, and oh, seeing you in a bathing suit would be so much pleasure. Ah, uh, seeing you say that, I can't be angry. Could have been such fun, though. There's a personality contest, a bathing beauty parade. Well, the summer's just beginning. There'll be other days. Maybe we can do it another time. Goodbye, Jane. Bye, Irma. Bye, Richard. Goodbye. Oh, don't feel too badly, Jane. No, uh, I'm kind of getting used to it. When you're that way about an important man, appointments mean nothing. You might as well throw out the clock. But how will I know when it's time to go to work? Oh. <laughs> Honey, it's just an expression. You and Al go ahead. You have a good time. I'll manage to find something to do. Come in. Tell me again, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Girls, I've made up with Mrs. O'Reilly. I realize I've been a blind fool. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, to make up with Mrs. O'Reilly, you've got to be a blind fool. <laughs> but it's something about taking her to the beach fascinated me. <laughs> what is it? Time will tell. <laughs> Al, chicken. Come in, Al, honey. Hiya, folks. Sorry I'm late. Was busy cutting off the top of my bathing suit. Why did you do that? Didn't think it was becoming. Especially the part that said, Property at Coney Island Bathhouse. <laughs> well, chicken, so you got your bathing suit on and ready to go. Where's yours, Jane? Oh, well, Al, Richard can't make it, so I decided to stay home. Oh, wouldn't think of it, Jane. You can come with Irma and me. Well, that, that's sweet of you, Al. All right, I'll go along. But you don't have to worry about entertaining me. I just want to get a breath of air. Oh, that's wonderful. And, Al, I, I hope we win the personality contest. Personality contest? Yes, we parade in front of the judges in our bathing suits. That'll be a novelty, standing in front of a judge and not having to plead not guilty. <laughs> and, Al, the Professor and Mrs. O'Reilly are coming with us, too. That's right, Al. You don't have to be afraid to go in the water. With Mrs. O'Reilly around, the sharks wouldn't dare come inside the three-mile limit. <laughs> Is this 
a minute. Here, Al, it's for you. They framed me. I got to think fast. Get an alibi. No, Al, he says he's a friend. Oh. Hello, friend, what's on your mind? You got a guy who wants to invest in my deals? Johnny, are you sure he's all right? Oh, he just twitches a little. <laughs> well, in that case, don't send him here. We'll go down and see him. Thanks, Charlie. If anything develops, we'll cut you in. Goodbye. Chicken, we'll have to cancel our beach trip. Someone wants to put dough in my latest deal. Oh, Al, you and your deal. Yeah, but this one may be the turning point in my life. Enable me to marry you. Marry me? Yeah, and let's face it, Chicken. Money is very important in the early years of our marriage. Because the children can't collect unemployment insurance until they're 16. <laughs> so we'll be talking with you, Chicken. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't cry, honey. I was stood up, too. But now we can't go to Coney Island. Who says you can? But you're taking Miss O'Reilly. That's the point. When you take somebody like Mrs. O'Reilly, you've got to have an antidote. <laughs> My arm, girl, Coney Island, here we come. <laughs> They call New York City the melting pot. I don't know that it's true all year round, but in the summer, if you want to melt, believe me, there's no place like New York. Of course, if you want relief, there's always Coney Island. And it is relief, because after a day at Coney Island, you can't wait till you get back to New York. Oh, frankly, I don't know why we came here. Coney Island has turned out to be a nothing. A crowded nothing. Irma, because Al didn't come along, is utterly miserable. She hasn't stopped eating since we got here. <laughs> she always eats like that when Alice stood her up. She says it helps fill the emptiness inside her. <laughs> As for me, without Richard, I'm completely bored. There's only one person seems to be enjoying himself, and that's Professor Kropotkin. You know why? He's burying Mrs. O'Reilly in the sand. <laughs> he keeps saying... Can you still breathe? <laughs> and when Mrs. O'Reilly says... Well, yes, Professor. He says... Got to get more sand. <laughs> Irma is still moping. Jane. What is it, sweetie? You know, sometimes I wish there was no such thing as men. Wish there was something else. <laughs> what would you like them to be? Oh, anything. Can Harry birds, dogs? No, that wouldn't be any good. We'd be spending all our time in pet shops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it'd be such trouble to find a husband who was housebroken. <laughs> Look, honey, forget about Al disappointing you. We're on the beach. We came here to enjoy ourselves. Let's be gay. Laugh. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Irma, that's hardly a laugh. Well, I can't help it, Jane. My heart's not in it. Why not, honey? A man just sat on our lunch. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's all we needed. Girl, are you very busy? No, Professor. What do you want? Could you please help me find Mrs. O'Reilly? <laughs> well, Professor, don't you remember where you buried her? Well, I put the paper plate over the spot, but the wind blew it away. <laughs> Here comes Miss O'Reilly. Hello, girls. Oh, there you are, Professor. Mrs. O'Reilly, where have you been? Oh, I was up on the boardwalk. Professor, I've entered our names in the personality contest. You and me? Your name and my name? Yes, do you think we'll have a chance to win? No, but we could set a good example of what would happen if Cupid ever starts using poison dark. <laughs> Oh, hush your soothing. Come on, Professor, walk me to the bathhouse. I want to change into me other bathing suit. You have another suit with you, Mrs. O'Reilly? Oh, yes. I understand that a girl's figure plays a very important part in these contests. So I think I'd better wear the bathing suit that leaves me knees exposed. <laughs> Come on, Professor. We'll see you later, girls. Oh, oh, Jane. Everybody's getting in a personality contest but me. Yeah. Well, I'm not in it either, honey. We just happen to be stranded without our men. I feel terrible. Yeah. 
Where are you going, sweetie? Oh, I think I'll take a swim. They say an ocean voyage makes you forget. <laughs> well, Irma, don't go out too far. Remember, you've just eaten. You might get a cramp. All right, Jane, I'll be careful. Why don't you take a swim with me? No, thanks, honey. This bathing suit dissolves in water. <laughs> no, I'll just sit here and amuse myself. Have fun. I will. Goodbye. Pardon me, miss. Yes? I just realized I've been sitting on your lunch. Oh, well, that's all right. You don't have to look so terrified. But I am. A lot of that stuff isn't on my diet. <laughs> what? Goodbye now. Well, I will be... Hi, Jane. Well, Al... Well, Al, what are you doing here? I thought you were tied up on business. Was, but the deal fell through. That could be expected. Yeah, but this one seemed like such a natural. It's a device for guys who don't want to break their promise to their wives when they told them they're going on the wagon. What is it? It's a bar on a wagon. <laughs> well, the guy didn't go for it, so let's forget it. Jane, uh, where's Chicken? Oh, she's in the water, Al. Last time I saw her, she was right up... Al, look at that crowd. The lifeguard's bringing someone in. So what? Good-looking lifeguard? Some dame probably hollers for help. Al, it's Irma. Irma? Oh, wait a minute. She can swim. Yeah, but Al, accidents can happen to the best swimmers. Come on, let's help her. She looks like she don't need no help. Look at the way she's got her arms around his shoulders. Oh, Al, don't be narrow. So he's carrying her. What do you want her to do when she's drowning? Carry him? Well, I don't like it, Jane, and I'm going to let her know it. Oh, hello, Jane. Oh, Al, gee, I'm so glad to see you. You see, I almost drowned. Yeah. Fun, wasn't it? <laughs> What do you mean, Al? Look, Chicken, I saw the way you were hugging that lifeguard when he was carrying you. Oh, Al, I wasn't hugging him. I was practically unconscious. In fact, that's what the, li the lifeguard told me all the way in. He kept saying, where do you want me to take you, unconscious? <laughs> just because you, were th you thought I was disappointing you for the personality contest didn't give you the right to carry on with some other guy. Well, now you've got the right, because I'm stepping out of the picture. Goodbye, matter Harry. <laughs> Please, Jane, don't let him go. Please go after him. Don't let him go. Oh, don't worry about him, honey. Give him a chance to cool off. I don't want him to cool off. Sun's going down. I'm getting chilly. <laughs> Jane, please. Oh, honey, all right. If you're going to get hysterical, I suppose I'll have to go after him. Al? 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 Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to talk to please, you. Please, Jane, I've made up my mind. Look, Al. Al, Irma wants you to come back. Frankly, if I were Irma, I'd not only give you railroad fare, I'd carry your bags to the station. But Irma loves you, and I'm not going to see you hurt her, because I love Irma. Oh, I don't want to hurt Chicken. Oh, you don't want to hurt her. <laughs> Do you realize what that girl goes through every time you quarrel with her? Do you realize what I go through? Well, let me tell you. Remember last October when you made a date with another girl? Yeah. Well, she tried to kill herself by gas. She turned on the stove and she sat in front of it for six hours before she remembered it was electric. <laughs> and then so it wouldn't be a total loss, she baked a cake. <laughs> Almost killed all of us. <laughs> Al, I have only one life to give to my country, but to me, you're not Uncle Sam. You mean I really affect chicken that much? Yes, you do. And if you're half a man, you'll enter the personality contest with her so she can have a little fun. Come on. What do you say, Al? Sure, Jane. Don't want to worry my future wife and have her hair turn prematurely gray. She'll have a tough enough time getting a job as it is. <laughs> you want a hot dog, Jane? They look pretty good. No, thank you. Yeah, well, tell Chicken I'll meet her here on the boardwalk for the contest. Got to make a call. Who are you calling, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe? Al, got a problem. That's enough for me. Goodbye, Al. Say, Joe, I'm at Coney Island, going to enter a personality contest with Irma. What do you suggest? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Forget the personality contest and go over to the shooting gallery if I want to clean up? But, Joe, there's no money in knocking over clay pigeons. Oh, you don't mean clay pigeons. The manager is loaded. <laughs> no, Joe, maybe mistaken, but think managers are out of season. We'll enter the contest despite your advice. Goodbye, noble friend. Well, we're all on the boardwalk, and the personality contest has just begun. There go Al and Irma. I must say that Irma looks adorable. She's arm in arm with Al, and they're doing a funny little dance step. I won't say it's not graceful. 
I'll only say that one look at it, and Arthur Murray had burned down his studios. <laughs> Alice smiling broadly and strutting with his chest out. He couldn't be any happier if he had a written guarantee that he wouldn't get a job for the next 20 years. <laughs> you know, I think she's going to win. I'm sure she is. Richard! Oh, Jane, I've been looking all over for you. I tried to get here in time for the contest, but I guess I'm too late. Richard, would, would you have entered this contest? With you? Any time. Oh, Richard, imagine the two of us standing here in the sun with the temperature 140. Well, it's not 140. Oh, it is when you talk that way. Look, Richard. Look, Alan Irma have won the contest. Look. So they have. Yeah. Jane. Jane, look at this wonderful cup I won. Oh, congratulations, honey. Thanks, but personally, I don't think it's fair. Why not? Well, Al won the contest with me, and if I won a cup, the least they could have done was give him the saucer. <laughs> home and found Irma putting a bathing cap on a cake of swan soap before she put it in the bathtub. So I said, Irma, what's the bathing cap for? And Irma said, I don't want my swan to get water in his ears. <laughs> well, Jane, you know very well that Irma isn't serious because she knows that the best place for swan soap is right in the dish pan. Sure, when it comes to washing dishes, swan's in a class by itself. Why, even the way a cake of swan feels tells you it's a perfect dishwashing soap. Next time, feel the cake with your fingertips. Feel how swan super creams blend makes it differ from other soaps. It feels smoother. Then feel those mild swan suds in your dishpan. They feel different, too. Richer, creamier. And they protect your hands. Yes, thanks to swan super cream blend, your hands are left with a smooth, soft, young look. And here's an added note, lady. Those swan suds rinse away so completely, your dishes don't need wiping. Now, that's a real time saver. So remember, if you want a soap that protects your hands, a soap that'll get you out of the kitchen in a hurry, you want the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend, swan soap. <laughs> over, but it's still too hot to breathe. So when we got home, I said, you know, honey, let's go to a movie. They're air-conditioned. Well, what's playing, Jane? Oh, there are lots of good pictures. The, um, the Fuller Brush Man, So Evil, My Love, The Great Waltz. Which one would you like to see? Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Gone with the Wind? Uh -huh. Irma, you've seen that picture 18 times in the past 10 years. Yes, isn't it wonderful the way Clark Gable never gets a day older? <laughs> Well, Gable may not be getting any older, but believe me, I'm getting a little grayer living with my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. My Friend Irma stars Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hunt Conry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an important announcement. You all know the security loan drive is on. Well, do you know just how much buying security bonds will help you save, will help you reach objectives like a retirement income, education for your children? Start today. Enroll in a regular payroll saving plan where you work or where you bank. But above all, start to save now by buying and holding United States security bonds. Frank Bingham speaking. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, try Spry, the pure all vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry. S P R Y. Rely on Spry. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> Lieber
Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. picture on the society page? Where? Right there. Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. Let's see. The annual masquerade ball to raise funds for the orphan children will be held tomorrow night at the Long Island estate of Mrs. Richard Rhinelander II. This marks the first time that Mrs. Rhinelander will supervise the affair. Jane. What is it, sweetie? Did you know about this wonderful affair? Why, uh, yes. And of course, you're going. Yes, Richard's invited me. Why? Oh, Nothing. I'll find something to do. What's that? Nothing, nothing at all. Just sit home with a deck of cards and play some solitude. Let's solitaire. <laughs> Look, honey, I- I'm not going to have you stand there pouting. You must realize the tickets cost $100 a piece. $100? Oh, it's nothing. Why, well, I could even get my aunt to take me if I had $200. <laughs> Come in. Charlie, me, Professor Kravatsky. <laughs> Janie and Irma, my two little sailboats, one trim, the other lost in a fog. <laughs> why, Professor? Oh, excuse me. Irma, Irma, I just noticed, why are you standing there looking so sad? Oh, Richard's mother's giving a wonderful charity ball, and Jane won't take me. Now, for goodness sake, Irma, stop making a heavy out of me. I have nothing to say about the invitation. But you have influence with Richard. When a girl goes with a fellow, she can get him to do anything she wants him to. Oh, is that so? Yes, I have Al eating out of my hand. That's only because it's for nothing. <laughs> oh, please, girls, don't argue. Irma, resign yourself. We are not invited, so we are not invited. Although, personally, I would love to help make that affair a success because it's for charity. Little orphans, bless them. The little puppies of humanity. <laughs> Oh, yes, Al. Just a minute. I'll get her. Irma, it's for you. Hello, Al. Where are you? Down at the unemployment office. <laughs> what, Al? You need a lawyer? Well, why? Oh, well, they want you to take a job? <laughs> what? Well, I don't see how they can make you go to work, honey. This is a free country. <laughs> well, they say you've been getting it free long enough. <laughs> well, come over here, honey, and we'll talk about it. Goodbye. Oh, that owl. You've got to hand it to him. You've got to hand it to him because he won't work for it. <laughs> right, Janie? Janie. Janie. Oh, I'm oh. sorry, Professor. I was lost in my thoughts about what costume I should wear with the ball. Come in. Hello, girl. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, look at your hair. Yes, I'm wearing the new short bob. How does it look? For a minute, I thought your head got caught in the electric fan. <laughs> you. Jamie, darling, do you like it? Oh, I love it. It looks so neat and so clean. Yes, I always felt the face was covered up too much. <laughs> that is a matter of opinion. <laughs> no one asked you. Irma, darling, how do you like my hair? Irma, is something wrong? Oh, Jane's going to Mrs. Rylander's charity ball. And I'll be all alone. Irma, we've been all through that. Oh, Janie, how I envy you. Mrs. Rhinelander, such a lovely woman. And I know it must be a worthy call. Oh, it is. And the ball is being held in the Rhinelander estate in Long Island. See, I, I just start shaking when I think of walking into that mansion. Imagine, 68 rooms and 40 baths. 40 baths? Well, now I know why they call them the filthy rich. <laughs> Darling, you're so lucky. I remember my first masquerade ball. I was a girl in Ireland, and at midnight I met a handsome young man. He took off his slipper and started pouring champagne into it. It held two quarts. <laughs> the bottle, that is. And he insisted on drinking a toast to me beauty. Pretty soon we were both a little, uh, shall I say, hi. <laughs> if you feel it, say it. <laughs> And just as he was telling me how beautiful I was, 
some wise alley came along and gave him a broom of seltzer. <laughs> it sobered him up, and I never saw him again. My, how the years fly. Yes, and it's too bad. While they were flying, they had to drag you along the ground. <laughs> You chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Well, what's the convention? Oh, gosh, we're all talking about Mrs. Rhinelander's charity masquerade tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. Saw the old gal's picture in the newspaper. Great day, that Mrs. Rhinelander. Well, we could go to the ball if we had $100. Chicken, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to help them kids. May be able to do so if my new deal comes through. <laughs> Another deal, Al? What is it this time? Stretching the ears of cats and selling them for rabbits? <laughs> This one is money in the bank. It's a coat lining designed like a deck of cards. So if you're caught with an ace up your sleeve, you can always say you're lining rips. Oh, brother. Come in. Hello, Jane. I, uh... Oh, company. Yes, Rick. Did you know everybody? Yes, indeed. Rich, we all want to tell you how proud we are of the work your mother is doing. Uh, for the office. Thank you. You see, mother just loves the children. Oh, so do I. When Al and I get married, we're going to have lots of children. You know, they say children are man's wealth, and I'm going to make Al a millionaire. <laughs> Enough, Richard, is everything set for tomorrow? Yes, yes, but Mother's a little worried. Why? Well, aside from the fact that the money is desperately needed, Mother wants terribly much to put this affair over. You see, last year, Mrs. Van Clive was in charge of the ball, and she raised $50,000. Uh -huh. Well, naturally, Mother would like to get more, because it all goes to charity, and besides, she can't tolerate Mrs. Van Clive. Oh. You see, she's been bragging all over town that Mother can never hope to equal her record, and Mother's determined to do it. Which one of my deals has come through? Could pitch in. Al, by the time your deals come through, those orphans will be old enough to take care of themselves and their grandchildren. <laughs> well, Richard, I'm sure your mother's party will make more money than Mrs. Van Clive. I hope so. See you all at the masquerade tomorrow. Oh? Well, certainly. You're all coming, aren't you? Uh, like to be there, Richard, but you know it's, um, uh, the fiscal year. I don't want to fisk out on the boys. <laughs> I would like to be there too, Richard, and believe me, it's not the money, but, uh, uh, tomorrow is my birthday, and I'll be a hundred dollars old. I mean, um... Uh... I would come too, Mr. Rhinelander, but when you see, I... Oh, hold it, everybody. Jane, didn't you... Didn't you give them their tickets? Tickets? Richard, you didn't give me any tickets. Oh, what's the matter with me? I've been carrying this envelope for days. Here's a ticket for each of you. I want to see this. Admission, one hundred dollars. Which damn pay? That's right. Think you can make it now, Al? Well, it is a fiscal year... But by an odd coincidence, it's also leap year. So I think I'm in a position to leap the fiscal and come to the master. And how about you, Professor? Why don't you escort Mrs. O'Reilly? Well, I might do it, since it's for charity. <laughs> She's going to be disguised anyway. And here's your ticket, Irma. Oh, let Al hold it. He always likes to treat me. <laughs> oh, Richard, this is so sweet of you. Forget it. Well, think I'll be getting back to Mother. I want to see how close she is to that $50,000 gold. Well, wait a minute, Richard. I'll walk with you. I've got to see about getting a costume. And you kids better get busy, too. Oh, we'll think of something. So long, everybody. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. How do you like that guy? Shelling out $400 so we can have a good time at his mother's party. Oh, I hope for her sake it's a big success. Yes, Richard's worried about whether his mother can raise $50,000. Must be a way we can make certain she does. What do you mean, must be a way? <laughs> well, there are many ways of raising money. Now, for instance, years ago, there was a little boy who used to wake up his aunt by bringing a mouse in her room. His aunt would scream and give him a quarter to take it away. He did this every day. And years later, this was to become known in financial circles as getting the ante up. <laughs> Look, Al, let us not meddle in this thing. Yes, let's not ruin the affair. Okay, and speaking of ruins, I think I'll go back to that wreckage I call my room. <laughs> I'll go along with you, Professor. I'd better get started on this costume right away. All right, Mrs. O'Reilly. And remember, when you're finished, if I recognize you, I don't thank you. <laughs> thinking I might go as Robert E. Lee. Nothing doing, Al. I don't want to spend a whole evening dancing with a steamboat. <laughs> Let's pause here on KNX. 
Now back to my friend Irma on KNX. Well, I have my costume on, and I think it's rather effective. I am going as Marie Antoinette. Irma couldn't understand why I spent so much time fixing my hair since I was going to have my head cut off anyway. <laughs> I went through before Al and Irma decided what costume to wear, you will never know. First, there was Al, who said, Hey, you know, think I'll go as Jesse James. Nothing doing, Al. You've got to wear a costume. Right, Jim. And then there was Irma, who kept saying, Gee, I don't know what to wear. So I said, Irma, why don't you wear that green costume you wore last year? You know, when you went as a tree? And Irma said, No, someone's liable to come as George Washington and chop me down. <laughs> all my patients could take, so I said, Irma, you'll just have to make your own decisions. And Irma said, Oh, I know what. I'll wear that kitty outfit that I wore on Halloween last year, huh? So the kitty costume was agreed upon, and I must say, Irma looks adorable with her two blonde braids tied in pink ribbons. If it wasn't for her figure, she could pass for six. Yes, a little schoolgirl to perfection, and I'm sure with those legs, none of the boys would ever play hooky. As for Al... Al has found the most ingenious disguise I have ever seen. He has cut a square hole in the front of his shirt so his tattoo will show, and he's coming as a television set. <laughs> oh, Mother, this is going to be a night to remember. Al. Yes, yeah, Jane? Now, it was very nice of Richard to buy these tickets for us, and all of us must be on our very best behavior. Now, there'll be a number of rich people there, and I'd appreciate it very much if you would not try to sell them any of your real estate lots. Why not? Well, you see, most of them have their yachts floating right over your property. <laughs> so, what about oil wells? No, Al. Why is it everything you deal in either has water over it or under it? <laughs> Look, Jane, don't worry. This is for the office. And I give you my word, you'll be proud of me. No, that's good enough for me. Come in. Hello, gang. Hey, Jane, you look terrific. Oh, thanks, Richard. And Irma. Well, you're so cute, I feel like putting you on my lap and telling you a bedtime story. Gee, kids have all the fun. <laughs> well, Richard, tell me, does it look as if your mother will reach that $50,000 quota? Frankly, no, Jane. It looks pretty bad. What with the flu and the weather, we'll be lucky to reach 40000 and mother feels so badly about it. Now, I suppose that Mrs. Van Clive will never stop gloating. Well, you know, she's like that. In mother's words, Mrs. Van Clive is an old... Uh, 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 uh. Watch your language. There's a little girl here. <laughs> Sorry, little girl. Well, Richard, isn't there any way we could raise more money at the party? Well, once we charge $100 admission, I don't know what else we can do. Maybe we'll think of something at the house. Where's the rest of the gang? Oh, the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly are putting on their costume. Why don't you and Jane run along? We'll meet you. I'd like that. Mother's so depressed, I'd like to be with her. Come on, Jane. Okay. See you later, kid. Why do you look so sad, Al? Burns me up, chicken. For an affair to help orphans, they can't get up enough dough. And on top of that, a swell gal like Mrs. Ryan is going to be ridiculed by that Van Clive day. Well, what can we do about it? Got to see that the dough is rich. And there's only one man who can help us. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> ah, got a problem. Gonna mingle with the rich tonight. How do I get money from them? What? No, Joe, it's gotta be with their permission. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is for charity. Often. Well, you don't say, Joe. You weren't often yourself, huh? Well, what happened to your parents? Oh, an accident. They died by listening to the chamber music? <laughs> oh, gas chamber music. <laughs> well, Joe, then you know what it means to help these kids. Yeah, how do I get them to shell out? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Great idea, Joe. Thanks a million. Goodbye, noble friend. Chicken, for once, Joe has come through. Come in. Hello, little girl. Is your mother... Oh, it's Irma. <laughs> Oh, you look like a little doll. Well, thank you. Do you think I can pass for six? Sure, just be yourself. <laughs> How do you like my costume, Al? Well, what are you supposed to be? Can't you guess? I know. A rag picker. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Professor, where'd you get all that miserable, dirty old rag? Well, yesterday, Mrs. O'Reilly gave me new drapes for my window. Oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> You're wearing the old drapes. No, Al, the new drapes. Oh, don't, don't mention her. She's furious. Oh, oh there she's now. Come here, Miss O'Reilly. Hello, everybody. Hey, Miss O'Reilly, what a swell get up. With that broom and that hair over your eyes, you're a perfect witch. Thank you, Al. 
And as for you, Professor Kirkpatrick... Well, no, take it easy, Mrs. O'Reilly. What's wrong? He insulted me. That's what he did. What'd he say? I didn't say anything. Oh, no. I spend hours getting his witch's costume on. And then when he sees me, he says, It's getting late. Why don't you put on a costume? <laughs> No time for personal grudge. Mrs. Reinhardt is in trouble, and we've got to come to the rest. She hasn't raised enough money. No, 10 G short of what Mrs. Van Clive did last year. Oh, glory be in all those poor orphans in such need. What can we do to help, Al? Got just the idea that we'll put this party across. Where do you find the biggest crowds spending money? At Coney Island. Right. Now, here's what we do. We go to the... <laughs> Rhinelander. Charming ball. Thank you, Mrs. Van Clive. Are you having fun? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful idea of yours to have this intimate gathering instead of that tremendous turnout I had at my charity ball last year. Really? Yes. <laughs> of course, you won't make nearly enough to take care of the poor little children. But perhaps next year the committee will realize their mistake and put me in charge of the ball again. You're so nice. Well... I'll try to amuse myself. Uh, where could I get a Manhattan? I'm so thirsty. Right over there at the bar. And you won't need any bitters in your Manhattan. Just smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so clever, Mrs. Reitland. Well, you probably think of something amusing to tell the kiddies when they're told they have to sleep eight in a bed because you couldn't raise the money. Hello, Mother. Oh, Richard. And Jane, you look lovely, dear. Thank you. What's the matter, Mother? You're shaking. Oh, I've just had a word with Mrs. Van Clive, my well-wisher. Oh, Richard, perhaps I've been a fool. Maybe I shouldn't have undertaken the responsibility of the ball. Well, Mother, you did your best. Jane, do you mind if I have this dance with my mother? I think it would be wonderful, Richard. Come on, Mother. Get your mind off, Mrs. Van Clive. This would be a nice waltz coming up. Oh, I'd give anything to put this party across. <laughs> hey! The program says a waltz, but they're playing a conga. They're forming a conga line. They're all following the leader. The leader? That's Al! <laughs> He's breaking up my phone. Mrs. Reinlander, I don't know how to apologize. Oh, he's taking them all into the library. What's the up to? I'm afraid to look. But I had to look. And I still can't believe my eyes. In front of me is Coney Island. Yes, Al, Irma, the professor, and Mrs. O'Reilly have turned the library into a miniature midway. Al is working the shell game. Now, I know the man. I know the man who's trying to guess under what shell appears. Last year, this man was in Who's Who. Ten more minutes with Al in the shell game, and this man will be listed in the 50 neediest cases. <laughs> Al is speaking. That will be ten dollars more you have lost to me, friend. And I sort of resent your remark that this seems like a dishonest case. Let's try something else. Take a cop. There, that's fine. Let me see. Oh, gee. Now, only an ace can beat that. I shall draw. How do you like that? It's an ace. <laughs> oh, I just can't understand it. I, I never seem to win. Oh, Al. Yeah, chicken. You better sweep up. A lot of aces are falling out of your coat. <laughs> oh, hold it, chicken. Mister, this young lady is just joking. She she knows I run an honest game, don't I? Miss. Well, Al, I thought you were just going to be the barber here. The barber? He hasn't told me he's going to clip everyone who came here. <laughs> Come on, chicken. Al, why are you dragging me? The gentleman may misunderstand. And I want to give this dough to Mrs. Langman. Well, look at the professor. Well, oh, professor. Ten folks now, Emma. Here comes another customer. Uh, pardon me. Do you know Thornton? Oh, certainly. Your name, madam? Uh, Mrs. Van Clive. Aha, uh -huh, I see. <laughs> Let me see your palm, please. Oh, ho, I see a sparkling future. Happiness, gaiety, laughter. <laughs> and then you get hit by a truck. <laughs> You are swinging between life and death. Only one doctor can save you. What's his name? A professional teacher. It costs you $50 to find out. <laughs> and here's the $50. What's his name? Uh, who do you go to now? Dr. Jones. He's a good man. Keep going to Mexico. <laughs> As if that's not enough, over in the right-hand corner are two booths. One is marked Lemonade, $1. The other kisses, $5 apiece. But they're not doing any business. Oh, no wonder. Al has made a mistake. He's got Irma selling lemonade and Mrs. O'Reilly selling kisses. Well, I'm 
getting out of here so fast, the super chief will look like it's backing up. James, 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 where are you going? Richard, I'm so mortified. I want to get out of here before your mother throws us all out. Throws you out? Why, Jane, mother's in heaven. Al and his friends have already turned in enough money to more than pass our quota, and the guests are having so much fun they insist mother hold the ball next year. You mean that, Richard? Sure, Jane. Come on, let's congratulate Al. Oh, Al? Yes? Hal, on behalf of my mother... You don't have to say anything. We're doing it for a swell lady and a bunch of wonderful kids. Oh, Al, Al. Big <laughs> journey. But one thing still bothers me. Irma, what were you doing in the lemonade booth? Weren't you supposed to sell kisses? Yes, but Al said get over there in that booth and pucker up, and lemons make me pucker. <laughs> What can I say except that there's never been a sweeter kid than my friend Irma. For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lieber Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. When other friendships have been forgotten, theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. You know, when a girl is beautiful, like my roommate, Irma Peterson, it's all pretty wonderful. She has a lovely figure, gorgeous blonde hair, and a face that fairly takes your breath away. People wonder why it doesn't go to her head. I'll tell you why, because there it would die of malnutrition. <laughs> oh, now, now, don't get me wrong, I love the girl. It's only that sometimes she does things that give me a groan in the dome. For instance, the other day I was reading the paper, and I said, Irma. Yes, Jane? It says here that our shoreline is receding at the rate of one inch every thousand years. Gee, that's wonderful. I can hardly wait to go bathing on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> well, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. But right now, I'm too excited to even think about it. You see, I've just received a letter from Richard Rhinelander, my ex-employer. And still the number one guy in my dreams. Jane? Yes, sweetie? Who's the letter from? It's from Richard. Richard? Oh, Jane, what does he say? I'll read it to you. Dear Jane. Dear Jane? Oh, he loves you. What makes you say that? Because he said dear. Irma, <laughs> for your information, at income tax time, I got a letter from the government saying, Dear Miss Stacy, and believe me, the Treasury Department and I are not engaged. <laughs> well, you can't go around with everybody. <laughs> what else did he write? Um, Dear Jane, I am basking in the sun at the Rothmore Hotel in Palm Springs. I will be back in New York for Thanksgiving, and I am bringing you a Mexican serape. Oh, gosh, he's adopted a baby. <laughs> Irma, a serape is a blanket. He simply mentioned the gift to show that he's thinking about me. Isn't that sweet? Yes, men can be so sweet when they're far away. Of course, I like them close, too. <laughs> you can take all the blankets you want. I'll take Al in person. <laughs> oh, be still, Irma. Hey, I've got an idea. Since Richard will be back on Thanksgiving, let you and I give a turkey dinner here in the apartment for our boyfriends. Oh, that'll be wonderful, Jane. And I'm sure Al will have the day off because it's a legal holiday and the unemployment office will be closed. <laughs> Grand. Now, look, Irma, it's very important that we don't say anything about this to Mrs. O'Reilly and the professor. It's been a long time since I've seen Richard, and I don't want it spoiled by their constant quarreling. So remember now, not a word. Well, I understand, Jane. I won't mention the word turkey once. Good. I'll just say we're having chicken. <laughs> no, Irma, just don't say anything about Thanksgiving. Is that clear? Well, of course, Jane. Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Merry Christmas. Christmas? <laughs> Why, Irma, darling, Thanksgiving isn't here yet. Uh-oh, the cat's out of the bag. Irma. <laughs> oh, we're not having any turkey, you know. Uh, uh, how is 
everything with you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Not so good, Janie. It's that Professor Kropotkin again. He left another one of his insulting notes on my door. Just listen to this. When I look into your eyes, my heart does flip-ups. Why, I think that's a beautiful thought. That's what I thought until I read the rest of it. Look what comes next. That's because you have a face that scares away me hiccups. <laughs> well, you know the professor. He doesn't mean anything by us. I don't know about that, Janie. The other day he took me to an antique show. And I was having a wonderful time bidding on an early American copper bathtub. And all of a sudden the professor began to laugh. What was so funny? He said it was the first time he'd ever seen one tub bidding on another tub. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie, Irma, and Mrs. O'Reilly. My three little birds. Janie, graceful like a swan. Why, thank you, Professor. And I'm a, a little lovebird. Oh, Professor, that's sweet. And you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Yes, Professor. Old bat. <laughs> Why, you. You'll be a dead duck before I get through with you. No, no, take it easy, Mrs. O'Reilly. I was only joking. No, to me, you are really an inspiration. Why, Professor? <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. Seeing you here in the half-light with your beautiful red hair brings to mind my first romance. Her name was Sonia. Every evening I would find her by the lake with her faithful colleague. And this is why every time I see you standing like this, I want to call out and say... Here over, here over. Why, well, you mangy old musician. Please, the two of you. Don't you ever know when to call it quits? I'm sorry, Jamie. Mrs. O'Reilly, I apologize. Well, I, I should think you would. I try so hard to be friendly with everyone. After all, it'll soon be Thanksgiving. Yes? And if you say I look like a turkey, I'll beat your brains out. Oh, well, turkey, oh, that reminds Irma. me... Irma... Reminds you of what, dearie? Well, you see, we're... It reminds her of the 4th of July. 4th of July? Yes. If you open your mouth, there'll be fireworks. <laughs> well, I, for one, have made no plans for Thanksgiving. But as far back as I can remember, I've always been invited to a turkey dinner. Is that so? Tell me, Mrs. O'Reilly, I've always wanted to know, was Miles Standish a big eater? <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, he was... Now, look here, you... Oh, uh, Mrs. O'Reilly, I'm sure we'll all have a place to go on Thanksgiving. I never worry about it, Janie. You see, Thanksgiving is so near the first of the year, and everyone wants to renew their lease. So I always get invited to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I got throat trouble, too. <laughs> and I'm sure my best friends won't forget me. Miss O'Reilly, you're priceless. Come on, we'll take a walk over to the automobile showrooms. I want you should stand alongside of a new Nash so I can make a comparison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what you mean, Professor. We're both so streamlined. <laughs> yes, and you're both seat four in the front. <laughs> Why, you... Well, that was a bit of a hint, wasn't it, Irma? Oh, yes, Jane. What are we going to do? Nothing. We'll just go ahead with the dinner as we planned. After all, we're two young girls with bows, and we're entitled to a little pleasure. Certainly, we're not married. <laughs> well, personally, I don't think the professor minds not being invited too much, but as for Mrs. O'Reilly, well, she is our landlady, and we've got to stay on the right side of her. So again, Irma, let me remind you, we do nothing to arouse his suspicion. Well, you can trust me, Jane. I won't breathe it to a living soul or any of my other friends. <laughs> Good. And look, honey, I've got to hurry to keep an appointment with the dentist, so would you mind going to the butcher's and ordering the turkey now so we'll have a good bird? Oh, I'll be glad to, Jane. Fine. See you later, sweetie. Hello? What's that you say? My 
my multiple theory on atomic fission works. Oh, that's nice. Who's it working for? <laughs> huh? Oh, no, I'm sorry. This isn't Einstein. My name is Peterson. Uh, you have the wrong number. But talking about fission, if you ever want to go fishing, I'll be glad to go. <laughs> Goodbye. Gee, now I know how Barbara Stanley felt. I'm sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Come in. Hiya, chicken. <laughs> Hello, Al, honey. Uh, Al, uh, do you have any plans for Thanksgiving? Uh, well, to tell you the truth, chicken, I did plan on taking you out to dinner. But uh, got a last-minute phone call, which makes it necessary for me to be out of town Thanksgiving. Oh, Al, Jane and I are having a big turkey dinner here, and you're invited. Now you can't make it. Oh, you're wrong, chicken. Just happened to remember they took my phone out just before the call came through. <laughs> Al, you're always making sacrifices for me. Glad to help you, chicken. Oh, Jane wants me to go right out and order the turkey. Yeah, chicken, are you and Jane going to have all the trimmings? You know, cranberries, sweet potatoes, stuffing, celery, olives? Oh, sure, Al. Well, in that case, I want to chip in. Oh, Al, it won't be necessary. No, no, I insist. Well, all right, Al, if it'll make you feel any better, uh, 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 what would you like to bring? Well, let's okay. see. Yeah, I could bring flowers. Might give you hay fever. <laughs> no point in bringing more candy. Just bought your pack of Lifesavers last week. <laughs> Champagne? Caviar? I got it. For them olives you're buying, you'll need toothpicks. Count on me for that. Oh, no, Alvin. This is, this is all on us. We want to catch the full spirit of the holiday. <laughs> Al? What, Chicken? How did they get the idea of having turkey on Thanksgiving? Glad you come to me for knowledge, Chicken, because I'm loaded with it. See, Thanksgiving originated with a bunch of pilgrims who came to America, led by some very famous men such as William Penn, Buffalo Bill, and uh, Wild Bill Hickok. Hickok? Oh, I know. He's the man who invented the suspenders. Uh, <laughs> precisely. Now, the Pilgrims really had a tough winter. There was a housing shortage, manufacturing was at a standstill, and everybody was really beaten out of work. So naturally, they thought they had something to be thankful for, so they decided to give a feast. Oh, I see. Now... The big delicacy in them days was bear meat. So they sent an Indian guide out to trap a bear. Unfortunately, this guide was nearsighted, and by mistake, he come back with a turkey. Well, imagine that. Yeah. And to this day, if it wasn't for that slight defect in Hiawatha's vision, we'd all be sitting down to a Thanksgiving dinner of stuffed bear. <laughs> oh, gee, that would have been perfect for our dinner, then we could all have a drumstick. Uh, well, them's the brakes. Come on, chicken, I'll walk you downstairs. Is that you, Irma, honey? Come on in. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, you look awfully upset. Is anything wrong? Yes. I've just told the Martins upstairs that I have a rule. No pets of any kind in this house. Yes, I know how strict you are about that. Well, I just found out they have a canary. And either that bird goes or they go. I'm going right back up there and give them five minutes to make up their mind. Hello? Oh, Richard, how nice of you to call me long distance. Yes, I got your letter. What? Oh. Oh, Richard. Oh, no. Oh, murder. Richard. But what? I sound crazy? I'm going crazy. I can't talk to you right now. Irma just walked in with a live turkey. Goodbye. Merry, <laughs> Merry Thanksgiving, Jane. Irma Peterson, how could you bring home a live turkey? Well, Jane, I was only trying to save money. What do you mean, save money? Well, I felt this one. It was already stuffed. <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Take that turkey back. Oh, I can't, Jane. The butcher said he won't take George back. George? <laughs> yes, that's his name. How do you know? Well, the butcher said, do you really want this turkey? When I said yes, he said, well, bye, George. So I did. <laughs> Your 
your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found it true. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. The story of Nancy Rule proves it. Her smile won success in the fabulous world of fashion. From Kentucky Center College, Nancy went to Chicago to begin her career in a department store. There she won promotions and a husband. Now she's fashion stylist for their own store in Freeport, Illinois. When Nancy presents costumes she's chosen at New York's Glittering Style previews, her winning smile is an important asset. Nancy said, It's a Pepsodent smile. I've used Pepsodent toothpaste ever since I was in college. I love the way it brightens my teeth. Like Nancy Rule, people all over America have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. In recent comparison tests, thousands of people preferred Pepsodent with Irium over the brands they've been using at home. Yes, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one for its cool, minty taste for making breath cleaner and teeth brighter. Try a new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Let's pause here on KRLD. To find out more about old-time radio, old-time video, and the pleasures of listening to audiobooks, visit the Audiobook Club website, www.audiobookclub.com, where you can get four audiobooks for just one penny. MediaBay.com Stay tuned. In our next hour, I'll have the conclusion to My Friend Irma, plus an exciting episode of Richard Diamond, Private Detective, here on KRLD. MediaBay.com Welcome back to the Radio Hall of Fame on KRLD News Radio 1080. I'm Carl Amari. Now for the conclusion to My Friend Irma. Well, I sent my roommate out to buy a turkey. It's funny, I always thought her name was Irma Peterson, but it turned out to be Frank Buck because she had to bring it back alive. <laughs> She's standing in the doorway with the turkey in her arms. She is looking at the turkey, and the turkey is looking at her, and I'm looking at both of them, and I don't know which head to cut off. <laughs> Irma, what in the world made you buy a live turkey? Well, you didn't specify Jen, and, and he looks so lonely. But, sweetie, you know Mrs. O'Reilly doesn't allow pets of any sort in the apartment. What will we tell her? She'll throw us out. Well, we could have cut a hole in the wall and let the turkey's head stick through and tell her we shot it in Africa. <laughs> Irma, before I shoot myself, let me make one thing clear. There is still a great housing shortage. If Mrs. O'Reilly finds out we're not inviting her to Thanksgiving dinner and then finds out we have a live turkey in the apartment, all three of us can take a boat to Africa. Oh, no, Jane, if we're going to take a trip, I'd rather get you on a slow boat to China. <laughs> Irma, this is no time for joking. We're in trouble. Well, now, let's see. Uh, gosh, there must be somewhere fooling Mrs. O'Reilly. I have it. Uh, I just bought a new hat, and maybe I can train the bird to sit on it, and I can say it came that way. <laughs> no, sweetie, it's liable to lay an egg, and we wouldn't be able to tell it from your head. <laughs> well, nobody but you would bring home a turkey by the name of George. <laughs> oh, see, Jane, isn't he cute? He knows his name. <laughs> Look, Irma, I'm not going to waste any more words. There's only one thing for us to do. You'll have to... to kill it. Kill George? Oh, Jane, I can't. Why not? Would make him an orphan. <laughs> Jane, I've grown very fond of him. Oh, for goodness sakes, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you see, he just called me mother. Oh, <laughs> oh Jane. Jane, I couldn't do it. Oh, stop dramatizing it. It's not that difficult. You just take a sharp knife and... Well, you just... Cut off its head, it's simple. But that's murder. Oh, preposterous. There's nothing to it. Then you do it. All right, I... I... <laughs> What's he saying now? <laughs> he wants a lawyer. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is silly. You and your imagination. You're making a nervous wreck out of me. Oh, if that's Mrs. O'Reilly, this is the end. Uh, who, who is it? Me. Oh, come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, uh, chicken. I was just about... Hey, that bird's a little early for dinner, ain't he? <laughs> Never mind the dialogue. Al, are you a man? <laughs> well, unless I forgot to take off my Halloween costume, yes. <laughs> what? Irma bought this live turkey, and if Mrs. O'Reilly finds out about it, we're all dead ducks. So would you, uh, kill it for us? Who, me? Nothing doing. I ain't got nothing against him. <laughs> Al, don't tell me you're squeamish. Cannot stand the sight of blood. Cut into a medium rare steak one time, almost passed out. Don't blame the steak. It wasn't the blood you saw. It was the check. <laughs> oh, no, Jane. Al has a soft heart. I know because every time I think about him, I get the same feeling in my head. <laughs> oh, thanks, chicken. But know what to do. You see, in a case like this, there's only one man who can help us. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Have to knock off a certain bird. What's my move? Well, for a C-note, one of your boys, casual Casper, will do the job so it'll look like an accident? <laughs> no, no, Joe, this is a feathered bird. A turkey. What do you advise? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Thanks, Joe, and goodbye, noble friend. Well, your problem is solved, girls. All we have to do is spread breadcrumbs around the electric fan. And when your little turkey... When your little turkey starts poking his head around them blades, you turn on the switch, set the tape. No, Al. I don't think I care for feathered wallpaper. <laughs> Uh-oh. This could be it. Well, who's there? Come in. Oh, come in. Hello, Jamie. I mind, Alan. Oh, look, it's a turkey. For a minute, I thought it was Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> His name is George. <laughs> a pleasure. <laughs> Girls, I don't want to be a wet blanket, but if Mrs. O'Reilly sees that bird and realizes she isn't looking in a mirror, she's going to throw you both right out. We know that, Professor. Maybe you can help us, huh? Anything you want. Uh, I knew we could count on you. Would you kill the turkey for us? Certainly. It's simple. Well, how are you going to do it? I'll tell him he has to share my room with me and he'll commit suicide. <laughs> well, I can see you're not going to be any help. Well, Irma, we have no choice. I know it sounds ridiculous, but we're going to put a leash around that bird's neck, and you and I are going to walk him down to the butcher shop. Oh, but jeez, I... Irma, my mind is made up. All right. Come on, George. <laughs> so long, George. I'll be seeing you Thanksgiving. You won't be seeing me, but I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Well, we managed to get the turkey out of the building without Mrs. O'Reilly seeing us. And now we're walking it down the street. Irma is leading the turkey on a leash. Come on, Fido. Here, Fido. Irma, why are you calling Fido? Well, we won't be conspicuous if people think it's a dog. <laughs> Come on, Fido. <laughs> Irma, can't you get that turkey to go faster? No, I think he knows where we're going. He, he keeps pulling back. That's silly. Jane. What? He's looking at you. He is? I mean, so what? He's got tears in his eyes. <laughs> it, it, it's just your imagination. Now, come on. Oh, there's the butchers. Irma, please, stop pulling on my skirt. That isn't me. It's a turkey. <laughs> it is? Yes. Why don't you look at him? Oh, stop being so emotional. After all, it's only a turkey. I think I had no willpower if I allowed myself to be... Uh... Irma? Yes? What's he doing now? 
<laughs> He's still staring at you and crying. Oh, this is ridiculous. We're behaving like children. Now, there's nothing to it. Come on, Irma. Here's the butcher. You take him in. Oh, I can't. He trusts me. <laughs> now, see here, Irma. If you think I'm going to let a turkey make a fool out of me, he got... Oh, Irma. What, Jane? I think he trusts me, too. <laughs> well, we're back in the apartment. Irma, myself, and... Guess who? <laughs> That's right. Dear little George. So far, we haven't crossed paths with Mrs. O'Reilly, but it's only a matter of time. Irma, however, is quite calm about the whole thing. She's knitting. Irma, what are you doing? I'm knitting some booties. Irma! They're for George. <laughs> oh, I mean Georgette. She just laid an egg. <laughs> Uh, put the turkey in the bathroom. This might be Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, all right, Jane. Okay, uh, he's in the bathroom. Uh, come in. Hello, Janie. I thought you had company. I heard a strange voice. Oh, that was me. You, Irma? Yes, it was her. Yes, there I go again. <laughs> Are you sure that's you? Yes, I have hiccups. But it sounded like a bird. Well, uh, uh, I had eggs for breakfast. Uh, Mrs. O'Reilly, tell me, where did you buy that lovely hat? I'm not wearing a hat. Well, it's very becoming. Don't change the subject. I know what's going on. You've got something in that bathroom. And I'm going to find out what it is right now. Well, Irma, get the suitcases. We might as well start packing. Oh, girls. Oh, will you ever forgive me for being so suspicious? The bathroom's empty. That sound must have come from other the other apartments. I'll go see. Oh, and I'm so sorry I bothered you. Irma. Irma, I can't believe it. Let's look in the bathroom. Well, for goodness sakes, you left the window open and Georgette has flown away. Irma, we're saved. Well, this is terrible. What do you mean, terrible? Who's going to sit on the egg? <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. That's borne out by the vote of thousands who tried new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium in a recent nationwide test. These people were given plain, unlabeled tubes of Pepsodent and were asked to compare it with the brands they were using at home. When their votes came in, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of 3 to 1. These people say new Pepsodent tastes better, makes their breath cleaner, and their teeth brighter than any other toothpaste they tried. Remember, that's not just our opinion. That's what people say. They say it three to one. They've seen Pepsodent with Arium remove the film that makes teeth look dull, uncover new brightness in their smiles. Try it, and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. <laughs> We still have no turkey for Thanksgiving, but at least we haven't been dispossessed by Mrs. O'Reilly, who's so strict about her rule, no pets. Irma, however, seems to be terribly concerned about this. Irma, honey, what's troubling you? Oh, gosh. Now I'm afraid to have Al come over. All we do is pet. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, talking about pets, me, Jane Stacy, I'm happy to live a dog's life with my friend Irma. My 
Pandorama is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean and is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Guskin. Don't forget, you'll be able to hear my friend Irma on the big two-hour star-studded Thanksgiving Day program over most of these stations. Losses due to fires are at an all-time high and still skyrocketing. With preventable fires striking at the lives of our citizens, their homes, communities, and our forests, it behooves all of us to help prevent the destruction and loss which fire inevitably causes. This is Wendell Miles reminding you to tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Testament Show, My Friend Irma, PBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center. For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. at 8224 West 73rd Street, New York City. And on the third floor in apartment 3B, all is serene and quiet. Except for my roommate, Irma Peterson, who is reading. T'was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Ah! Look, Jane, a mouse! <laughs> now, don't get excited. It's lost. It's probably looking for Professor Kropotkin's room. Oh, gee, Jane, I've never been so happy on Christmas Eve and... That's because I have such wonderful friends. You and Richard, Miss O'Reilly, and Professor Kropotkin, and of course, Al. Oh, by all means, Al. Of course, I can't really consider Al a friend because I'm going to marry him. <laughs> Naturally. And Jane, you don't know what it means to have a few good friends you can count on, especially a Christmas Eve. Well, you know, when you'd really like to be with your family, but... Mine lives over 1,500 miles from here. Irma, you never say much about your family. Oh, Jane, there isn't much to say. They're just an average family, just like me. <laughs> Perfectly normal people. For instance, there's, there's Anna Peterson, my younger sister. Uh, she's not as old as I am. <laughs> it figures. And there's my brother, Ernie Peterson. Uh, he's engaged. To be married, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, what about your parents? Oh, I miss them the most. They're just like a mother and father to me. <laughs> you know that happens in most families, Irma. But, gee, they're, they're all in Minnesota and I'm here. But I'm not lonesome because I'm surrounded by good friends and, Jane, I really appreciate them. That's why I'm giving a Christmas Eve surprise party tonight for you and Richard and Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly and Al. Tonight? Uh-huh. Oh, Irma, honey. Well, I don't know how to tell you, but... Uh, tell me what? Well, dear... Uh, excuse me, honey. Hello? Oh, hello, Richard. What? Yes, uh, I know it's formal. No, I've never been to the Long Island Country Club. Yes, uh, I'm terribly excited. It'll be our second Christmas Eve together. Oh, I'll be ready. Goodbye, dear. Jane, you, you mean you're going out tonight with Richard? Or what about my Christmas Eve party? Well, honey, you didn't say anything about it, and Richard invited me to a Christmas party at the Long Island Country Club. I'd hate to miss it. It's the affair of the season. Oh, but this is Christmas Eve, and I, I thought tonight we'd be together. Christmas Eve isn't like other holidays, you know. Well, I realize that, honey, but oh, I, I could understand it if it was Independence Day, then we wouldn't have to be together. <laughs> We could be independent. <laughs> Irma, I'm terribly sorry, but... Well, there's nothing I can do about it. Richard asked me weeks ago. Anyway, my not being here shouldn't spoil your party. You'll, you'll still have Professor Kropotkin and, and Mrs. O'Reilly and Al. I understand, Jane. I still have the others. Sure. Uh, 
come in. Something me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> How are my two little Christmas trees? One full grown and the other a little sapling? <laughs> My professor. Excuse me, a little yuletide joke. By the way, girls, a Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you, too. Merry Christmas, Professor. I hope you'll excuse me for coming down. I don't mean to interrupt, but I wasn't feeling so good. And when I don't feel so good, I always rush out of my room as fast as I can. Why? I wouldn't be found dead in that place. <laughs> Well, girls, do you realize tonight is Christmas Eve? Yes, and just look at that blanket of snow outside. Isn't it lovely? That is a matter of opinion. If Mrs. O'Reilly doesn't put glass in my windows, not only will I have a blanket of snow, I'll have a carpet of the same material. <laughs> oh, Irma, you'd better ask the professor about this evening before it's too late. Oh, yes. Uh, professor, will you come to my Christmas Eve party tonight? Tonight? Oh, Irma, I'm so sorry. You mean... You mean you can't come either? Well, it can't be helped. I'm, uh, tonight I'm playing my fiddle at the Gypsy Tea Room. I've been practicing all day. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, I know, but they pay me for it. <laughs> First Jane disappoints me, and now you. Well, now, look, honey, the professor can't help it. He must earn a living. And after all, you still have Mrs. O'Reilly and, and maybe the Martins upstairs. And, of course, there's Al... Come in. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Well, the same to you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Merry Christmas. You say, Mrs. O'Reilly, that's a beauty from stairs. But that sign in the middle of it. You don't like it? Merry Christmas, lots of cheer. Remember the landlady or you'll freeze next year. <laughs> To me, it's not a sentimental thought. <laughs> Miss O'Reilly, I'm giving a big surprise Christmas Eve party tonight for you and Al. We come tonight. Oh, Irma, darling, I'm so sorry. You... You mean you're too busy, too? Yes, the Martins have invited me to go to Jersey with them. And since they owe me four months back rent, I can't afford to let them get on the train by themselves. <laughs> this is awful... First Jane turned me down, and the professor, now you... <laughs> Maybe next year, Irma, dear. Merry Christmas and goodbye. Oh, Jane. Oh, sweetie, now stop crying. I, I know you're disappointed, but you should have told us about your party earlier. And besides, honey, you won't be left alone. You bought some food, didn't you? What do you mean? Of course I bought some food. Then Al will show up, I guarantee it. <laughs> Speaking of food, I think I'll go up to my room and have my dinner. Are you cooking, Professor? No, I just take one look at that dump, I sit down and I eat my heart out. <laughs> Merry Christmas, girls. I'm sorry, Irma. Honey, I'm sorry things turned out this way for you. Oh, it's all right, Jane. This is one way of finding out who my real friends are. They're Al. Every one of them. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Merry Christmas. Oh, gee, Al. Merry, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad to see you. Same here, chicken. I like being with you, too. Mind if I warm my hands on the radiator? Well, of course not, honey. Uh, how'd they get so cold? Wanted to take the Crosstown trolley, but with all that snow on the ground, it took me four hours to find a transfer. <laughs> Honey, that's too bad. And your poor face is so red. Uh, uh, that ain't from the cold chicken. They caught me with yesterday's transfer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at the time. Richard's going to pick me up in an hour, and I haven't even started to dress. Al, aren't you going to take your top coat off? Oh, thanks, Jane, but I ain't staying. Just came in to wish chicken a Merry Christmas. I got to be on my way. Got a big deal brewing. Oh, Al. Oh. Oh, chicken, it's important. Oh, you and your deal. Business is business, chicken. I gotta be running along. But I'll be left all alone on Christmas Eve, and, and now I depended on you, my own boyfriend. Chicken, if I could only explain. <laughs> Don't bother. None of you must think very much of me if you can leave me alone on Christmas Eve. Find friends I have. Goodbye. How do you like that? Al. 
Of all the low-down, contemptible, good-for-nothing... Hold it, Jane. I won't have you saying those things about the girl I love. <laughs> I'm not talking about Irma. I mean you. How could you desert her on Christmas Eve of all nights? Me, I, I have to go out with Richard, but you're her boyfriend. Oh, Jane, I love Irma. And when a man is in love, he ain't responsible. He, he, he may do strange things, things he'd never do in his right mind. What are you talking about? I went and got a job. <laughs> you got a job? Al, have you been drinking? I knew it would shock you, but it's just for one night. <laughs> Want to make a little dough and buy Irma a present. Oh, well, I apologize, Al. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Forget it, Jane. Oh, gee. Listen, Al. The Christmas carolers. Gee, that's pretty. Would like to stay, but I, I gotta get to work. Tell her I'll see you tomorrow, huh? Goodbye. I'm all right. It's just that... Well, Irma... You see, Irma hasn't any family or relatives in New York, and, and this Christmas Eve, all our friends seem to be busy, and I just couldn't leave her alone, Richard. I wouldn't want you to. Are you sure you mean that, Richard? Of course, honey. I understand. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye, and Merry Christmas, Jane. Merry Christmas, Richard. But, Al, I thought you left. Came back for my hat. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, Jane, but if you're willing to give up a good time tonight for Irma, I guess it's my duty to be with Chicken, too. Oh, Al, that'd be just wonderful. But wait a minute. What about the present you were going to get for Irma? If you don't work tonight, where will you get the money for it? Going to hock my watch. But, Al, that's the only thing you own. You know that no matter how bad times have been, you always said you would never hock your watch. Well, a man like me don't need a watch. I, 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 I sleep all day long, so, so time is not important. And at night, it's too late to do anything. Uh, come in. Oh, it's you, Professor. Excuse me, Jane. I've been thinking about poor little Irma, and, well, I decided to give up the job so tonight I could be with her. But, Professor, won't that cost you money? You get big tips during Christmas. On Christmas Eve, it's not important to make money. It's important to be with friends. After all, what's money? Well, it's pretty important. I see you've been talking to Mrs. O'Reilly again. <laughs> no, no. My little Irma has no father in New York, so tonight Professor Kropotkin will be her father. Atta boy, Pop. Listen, Al, the first chance I get, I'm disinheriting you. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. I took the liberty of walking in. Why, Mrs. O'Reilly, I thought you were on your way to New Jersey. I changed my mind. I got to thinking about poor little Irma being all alone tonight. And I just didn't have the heart to go. I'm going to stay here with Irma. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Professor Kropotkin just said he's going to be her father. I tell you, if that's the case, I'll be her mother. <laughs> I got news for you. If you're the mother, I'll be on the train for Reno in the morning. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I've got a wonderful idea. Irma was going to throw a surprise party for us. Now we'll throw one for her. We'll give her the best Christmas a girl ever had. Well, I'll go out and hock my watch and buy the present. I'll get my violin. Oh, and we can have the party in my apartment. It's bigger. Come along, Jenny, and we'll start decorating. Oh, it'll be a merry Christmas. Come on, Professor. Take me on. The fair swap. She's been taking my blood all year. <laughs> Until Irma finds out, she'll be the happiest girl in New York. Train now leaving on track six for Harmon, Poughkeepsie, Albany, Buffalo, and Point Six. 
Where to, miss? Please, mister, what is the fare to Minneapolis? Uh, $58, round trip. $58? I, I only have six. Where can I go for six dollars? Six dollars? Let me see. How about Niagara Falls? Oh, I couldn't go to Niagara Falls. I'm not even married. <laughs> uh, I'll find some other place to go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film on your teeth. And you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste. Because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film. Brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, we're down in Mrs. O'Reilly's room, the professor, Al, and myself. Al is beaming proudly. Come January the 1st, he will have completed a solid six years of steady unemployment. <laughs> I'm setting the table, and Mrs. O'Reilly is out trying to find a Christmas tree. Oh, me aching feet. I've walked all over and I can't find a Christmas tree. Well, did you see Irma anywhere in the neighborhood? No, I didn't. But it's nothing to worry about. We must get the tree before she gets back. Tree? Well, there's only one man who can help us. Who, Al, as if I didn't know? Who else but... Hello, you? <laughs> ah, got a problem. Need a Christmas tree right away. Huh? I can get one at Macy's already trimmed for a dime? Oh, the dime is for a glass cutter. The tree is in the window. <laughs> no, no, Joe. No, no, this, this is Christmas Eve. When I hear jingle bells, I don't want them on a patrol wagon. <laughs> what, Joe? You're playing Santa Claus tonight? Going down the chimney? Joe, this is quite a change for you, isn't it? Oh, you're going in with an empty bag and coming out with a full one. <laughs> well, Joe, nothing I can say except good luck and Merry Christmas, noble friend. Oh, Al, what are we going to do? It's getting so late. Stand over there and, and we'll count all the lights and give her a big kiss. Come in. Merry Christmas, honey. Here's one for me. Me too, my darling daughter. For goodness sake, will someone please put on the lights? <laughs> Richard! I thought Irma needed a shave. <laughs> You, well, I thought you went to the club. I couldn't take it. Same old crowd, same old monotony. So I realized that I'd rather be here with real people on Christmas Eve. Oh, gee, Richard, I'm so happy, and you're more than welcome. Where's Irma? Well, she thought we were all deserting her, so she went out in a huff. That's why we're throwing a surprise party for her. We're waiting for her to come back. Yeah, don't want to find chicken until we can get a Christmas tree, though. Uh, got any ideas, Richard? Why don't we go out and buy one? Nice gesture, Richard. We'll wait here for you. <laughs> You don't have to. It's my pleasure, Jane. I saw several on the way over. I'll have one in a few minutes. Be right back. And I'll get the cake out of the oven. And I'll make some punch. And I'll tell you when it's right. <laughs> Jane. Jane, what are you crying about? The party's taken four. I know. So wonderful having everyone pitch in, Richard getting a tree, and, and all of you giving up things. Oh, this is the most wonderful Christmas I've ever had! Look, lady, this is your third round trip on this ferry boat. Ain't you got a home? Ain't you got any friends? No. Well, take my advice. 
make some. All right, I'll, I'll try. Thank you, and a Merry Christmas to you. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. On a sleigh. Oh, what fun it is to ride. On a sleigh. In a one-horse open. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, fellas. Look, lady, we're Christmas carolers. We don't do this for a living, but we enjoy it. And we rehearse a great deal. We don't mind you joining us, but we like to have the sleigh come after the horse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, fellas, let's do it again. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride. When the horse comes after the sleigh. <laughs> Look, lady, would you mind running along? Oh, all right. I was just lonely. Merry Christmas. Pardon me, lady. Have you got a dime for a cup of coffee? Oh, you poor man. Uh, and Merry Christmas. Uh, maybe you ought to have another dime for a donut. Oh, thank you. Oh, Gosh, I, I don't have any change. Well, would you like me to break that five for you? <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, are you all alone in New York, too? Yeah. <laughs> How about you? I'm from Minnesota. Minnesota? How well I know that place. You know, you look very familiar. I do? Well, my name is Peterson. Of course. You're Peterson's little daughter. <laughs> my, my father's name is George. Hey, let me think. Peterson. Hey, that must be George Peterson. Well, how did you know? Why, I remember. <laughs> you used to live in... Uh, in... Uh, Minneapolis. Let me see. George Peterson. Minneapolis. <laughs> That's the place I never forget a name. Oh, well, it, gee, it, it's so nice to meet some old friends. Especially when you're lonely. You, you can keep the five dollars, sir. Thank you. But this is only a loan. I'll return it the next time I see your father. Good old Fred Petersburg in Wisconsin. No, no, it's, it's Peterson in Minnesota. Mister, mister. Al, we've walked for miles. Perhaps we'd better go home and call the police to look for Irma. Maybe you're right, Jane. Pardon me, but you got a dime. Oh, Al, it's you. <laughs> you got that quarter you owe me? Mushface, ain't you got no character? How can you panhandle on Christmas Eve? A well, great pickings tonight. Just got a fin from a blonde. Told her I knew her old man, uh, Peterville uh, Peterson in Minnesota. Peterson? Al! Mushface, which way'd you go? Cross town. You know it? Why, what's the difference? I've been feeling like a crumb ever since I clipped it. <laughs> Seemed like such a nice kid. Hey, would you give her back this pin? Yeah, thanks. And Merry Christmas. Hey, bud, you got a dime for a cup of coffee? <laughs> come on, Al, come on. Let's go home and call the police. Now I'm really getting panicky. All right, Jane, I'm with you. Lady, I seen that picture, Mildred Pierce. Now you get off this bridge. I was just looking at the water, Mr. Watchman. Look, lady, don't look down there. Everything that's beautiful is up here. It's Christmas Eve, you know. Yes, I know it. I'm so lonely. Oh, I get it. You're all alone, huh? Yes. Any friends? Yes, but my closest friends are far away. Well, now, don't you cry, sister. You're coming home with me. We ain't got much, but we're happy to share it. Hey, Bill. Hey, yes, Sergeant? Did you happen to see a blonde girl? Say, lady, what's your name? Irma Peterson. That's all we want to know. Come along, sister. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. 
Didn't do what? I don't know, but my boyfriend always says to say you didn't do it. <laughs> now, look, Jeannie, we got to be brave. Now it's up to the police. They'll find us. But we got to take our minds off it. Mrs. O'Reilly, would you like to dance? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I'll dance with her. I'll play the fiddle. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. How do you like that? I just started playing and already the neighbors got the police here. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a squad car pulling up. I think it's Irma. My chicken. Oh, Al, it is Irma. The police have found her. She's coming up the steps. Now, quick, turn out the lights, everybody. Come on, we can still surprise her and have the party. Come in, dearie. Irma, darling. Surprise, chicken. Here's a big kiss for you. And here's a kiss of your father. Why, Professor? Quick, turn on the lights. I'm dying. I just kissed Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> Irma, darling, Merry Christmas. Where have you been? Oh, you're all here. I thought no one loved me and I felt so alone. Oh, honey, don't you know that people always spend Christmas Eve with their loved ones? And you're the one we love the most. Exactly my sentiments. Bless my little Irma. You're like my own daughter. Sure, chicken. I'd never leave you. I want to spend all my Christmas Eves with you. Oh, this is the best Christmas a girl ever had, surrounded by her friends. Oh, it's midnight. Is that right, Al? Wait a minute. Look at my watch. Al, why are you going to the window? Watch happens to be across the street. <laughs> You're right, chicken. It's 12 o'clock. Merry Christmas, chicken. Merry Christmas, Al. And Merry Christmas, Professor Kropotkin, and, and Mrs. O'Reilly, and Richard, and Jane, and all our friends. Merry, Merry Christmas. And as for me, my sentiments are the same as those of my friend Irma. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never stops forming. No, it never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with irium today. My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard and stars Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean and is brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad is Professor Kropotkin, Gloria Gordon was heard as Mrs. O'Reilly, and Donald Woods as Richard. Music was under the direction of Blood Gluskin. This is Wendell Niles speaking. The R.I.S.K. Brisk Flavor. That's what you get in Lipton Tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often. Because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea. The brisk tea. With that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center. Tom Forces Radio Service presents My Friend Irma, starring Marie Wilson as Irma, Joan Banks as Jane, and Hans Conried as the lovable Professor Kropotkin. Friendship, friendship, just perfect friendship. Where the other friendship has been forgotten, theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Hello, Jane. Hello, sweetie. What kept you so long? Well, I went six stops back to our station. Why? Well, every time I went to get...
get off, some nice gentleman got up and offered me a seat, and I just couldn't turn him down. <laughs> oh, Jane, I have wonderful news. Really? I've decided to better myself. Oh, wonderful. You're going to give up Al? Oh, no, Jane. Uh, I mean, I've made up my mind to have culture and social position. Uh, so I took my last $30 out of the bank and enrolled in the school for piano lessons. Piano lessons? Mm-hmm. Irma, look in the corner. Hmm? Oh, it's not there. No. Oh, well, you probably mislaid it someplace. <laughs> yes, I swept it under the rug while I was cleaning. Hmm. Look, sweetie, I'm trying to get this situation clear. I sent the piano back to cut down expenses, and you have to pick this time to take piano lessons. Irma, I can't understand how you could do a thing like that. You never touched that piano. Well, it got me all confused. It has three pedals on the bottom, and I only have two legs. <laughs> Irma, let's not waste any more time. The piano is gone, and you need your money. So go back to the music school and tell them you've changed your mind. Oh, gee, they won't give the money back. Uh, you can see what it says right here in this circular. Let me see. see. The Beethoven School of Music. Sam Beethoven, president. <laughs> They have a real nice slogan, haven't they, Jane? Well, let me read it. If you have music in your heart and bones, who knows you may be another Spike Jones. <laughs> oh, no. And look at this. Hours from 9 to 6, payments in advance, and positively no refunds. I discussed that part about refunds with Mr. Beethoven, and he said the purpose of music is to make people happy. And that if he had to give back the money, it would make him very sad. <laughs> but, honey, what are you going to do? You're stuck with the lessons and you have no piano. What are you going to practice on? Use a typewriter and hum. <laughs> oh, sweetie, be sensible. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, J.D. and Irma. Proud like two little peacocks. One with her head in the air, the other with air in her head. <laughs> Why, Professor? Oh, excuse me, Jenny. A little joke I found on a package of birdseed. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, I was wondering, could I borrow some wire to hang up a picture of Mrs. O'Reilly in my room? Well, surely, but why the sudden affection for Mrs. O'Reilly? The doctor's orders. <laughs> doctor's orders? Yeah, yeah. He put me on a diet. And her picture is the only thing that will spoil my appetite. <laughs> what seems to be the trouble, girls? You look a little... Sh Say, where is the piano? Professor, I just sent the piano back because the payments were too large. And what do you think Irma did? Signed up for piano lessons. How did you guess? I figured for Irma to be a logical stab. <laughs> <laughs> Irma, darling... Maybe you can get your money back. Oh, no, there are no refunds, but it, it says on this circular that I can substitute something else for piano lessons. And, gee, you're a professor. I mean, you're a musician, Professor. What do you suggest? Well, please, let me look at the list, huh? Uh, aha, uh -huh, Beethoven Music School. I knew a man who took that course. Studied for ten years. Still couldn't learn to play an instrument. Then the school didn't help him at all? Well, Janie, yes and no. After ten years, he was so mad that every time he saw someone play, he would wave his fist at him. Became one of the biggest conductors in America. <laughs> you see, Jane, I told you it was a good school. Uh, what course do you think I ought to take, Professor? Well, here's something that sounds practical. Combination harp and drumlet. Practical? Sure. Anyone who practices all day on the drum should also be prepared to play the harp. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Professor? Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Say, Al, that's a beautiful coat. Where did you buy it? Oh, thanks. Got it on an election bet. Oh, you won it. Well, not exactly. Another guy lost the bet, and I held his coat while he pushed a peanut down the street with his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man, he didn't see the traffic signal turn green. <laughs> Wouldn't have happened if he had worn a taillight. Say, what happened to the piano? Oh, Jane sent it back so... Oh, that's tough. Well, if my new deal comes through, we'll all be on easy street. 
<laughs> what is it this time, Al? Punching holes in Dixie cups and selling them for soup strainers? <laughs> Nothing so petty. This one can't miss. It's a special type television set for bars. It shows only half an image. So when you start seeing double, the picture will still be single. <laughs> well, what do you think of it? Oh, it's wonderful, Al. Gee, don't you think he's a live wire? No, but I'd like to see him holding on to one. <laughs> Look, Al, if you really want to be helpful, see if you can get Irma's money back. What money? I paid $30 for piano lessons, but... Now that Jane has sent the piano back, I won't be able to hear what I'm playing. <laughs> well, if we want to get that money back, Chicken, all we got to do is tell him a pathetic story, and it's got to work. Are you sure, Al? Why, certainly. Sob stories have worked all through history. Take Columbus. After he discovered America and came back to report to the Queen, she started to ball him up. So he explained in these words, Your Royal Highness, I know you meant us to go to India. But we got lost with no compass. Thus came the expression, non-compass mentis. <laughs> oh, brother. You see, Jane, you think Al doesn't know anything. Well, this ought to prove it. Good heavens, what was that? <laughs> That's Mrs. O'Reilly. She sounds like she's being killed. Calm yourself. I had the same hope. But she's only singing. And she won't tell me why. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Hello, everybody. Well, Mrs. O'Reilly, why the sudden burst of song? Why, don't you know it's almost time for the annual singing contest? What singing contest? Oh, it's a neighborhood thing, Al. The community center around the corner gives a $50 prize to the winner. That's right. It's 72nd Street versus 73rd Street. And since it's a friendly affair, I'm entering the contest. Mrs. O'Reilly, you are entering the contest? And why not? Look, Mrs. O'Reilly, just because you are built like the sextet from Lucia don't mean you can sing like that. <laughs> Yes. For your information, I'd have you know I came in second last year. I would have won, but I had a frog in my throat. Well, then it's your own fault. You should have kept still and let the frog say. <laughs> oh, look. Hold it a minute. Oh, please, Professor. Let me see that circular. Irma, what are you up to? Now, let's see. Bagpipe. Trombone, bugle. Oh, here it is. Vocal lessons. Vocal lessons? Well, Jean, I, I can't get my money back for the piano lessons, so maybe I can take vocal lessons for a couple of weeks and then try for the prize. Irma, you can't even carry a tune. Oh, I won't go in for any of that heavy music. <laughs> uh, uh, Miss O'Reilly, do you mind if I compete with you? Oh, I'm used to competition. Sure. Wasn't she in that sewing contest with Betsy Ross? <laughs> You know, Jane, I think Chicken's got a great idea. Well, I suppose the money is lost anyway, so no harm can come from her trying. Oh, thank you, Jane, and I'm going to try very hard. You can't tell what'll happen. Oh, this is exciting. Wouldn't it be terrific if Chicken turned out to be a female Caruso? <laughs> yes, Al, and then you'll be my man Friday. <laughs> They say when most good singers sing, the glasses vibrate. But when Irma sings, you get the feeling the glasses are trying to run back into the cupboard. <laughs> Deep in my heart, I know she hasn't got a chance to win the contest, and the money she gave the Beethoven Music School is down the drain, but there's always a chance that the judge of the contest may have worked at Atlantic City and will declare Irma the winner because she has the nicest legs. Which gives me the thought that if Irma were a cricket and would rub her legs together, she'd make better music than she does with her voice. <laughs> Uh-oh, there she goes again. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Gee, aren't those lyrics pretty, Jane? <laughs> Irma, are you sure this is what you want to do? 
Oh, this is only my practice number. I can pick any song I want to for the audition. I, uh, I may even sing an operatic number. Opera? Do you know any? My favorite is Laugh, Clown, Laugh from the opera Parcheesi. <laughs> Parcheesi. Oh, yes, that must be Italian for Pagliacci. Look, sweetie, I... I've already resigned myself to kissing that $30 goodbye, but as long as you insist on going through with this audition, don't you think you should try to sing something simple? Well, there are three simple songs I like. Uh, I'm Just a Prisoner of Love, Why Not Take All of Me, and He's Too Fat for Me. (laughs) Gee, all afternoon at the office, I was trying to decide which one I like best. At the office? So your boss, Mr. Clyde, must have just loved that. Yes, he said my singing really sends him. It's just that he has so much work to do at the office, he can't go. (laughs) Oh, Irma, why don't you just forget this whole thing? Oh, no, Jane, I'm sure I can sing. Don't forget they laughed at another singer, but now he's a millionaire. What singer are you talking about? The one who sells all those sewing machines. Listen, Jane, I'm going down to the dime store. So far, I have a prisoner of love, and why not take all of me and the others, but maybe I'll find something I like better. All right, sweetie. Goodbye. Hello. Who? The community center? Oh, yes, Mr. Sterling. What? You received Irma Peterson's application to enter the singing contest. What? You're listening to all the 73rd Street contestants in a half an hour? Yes, I'll tell her you'll be here. What? Yes, I'll convey the same message to Mrs. O'Reilly. Thank you, Mr. Sterling. Goodbye. Come in. Oh, uh, Mr. Clyde. Miss Stacy, excuse me for barging in like this. Is Irma Peterson here? No, but she'll be right back. Why? I want to fire her. I want to assassinate her. I want to... I don't know what I want to do to her. Now, control yourself, Mr. Clyde. I'm sorry, Miss Stacy. That girl has worked for me for some time, and I've put up with a lot. I didn't mind when she cut holes in my galoshes so the water would run out. <laughs> and I could even take it when she had my desk painted and that put my new top coat over it so no one would get their hands wet. <laughs> but what is this song title madness? Well, Mr. Clyde, she's entering a singing contest, and she has song titles on her mind. On her what? Miss Stacy, I dictated a letter to her yesterday, and I found this carbon copy. It's to my most important client. I'm supposed to be a lawyer, but when he gets this letter, I'll need one. Well, let me see it. Dear Mr. Vanderbilt, I regret the Court of Appeals decided against us, but I trust you'll appreciate my position in this matter, as I am just a prisoner of love. <laughs> oh, no. Continue. Please remember that you have had my untiring efforts, my 30 years of experience, my unimpeachable integrity. So, why not take all of me? There's more. Keep going. I was considering enlisting the help of ex-Senator Bernard Spindell, but I have decided against this because he's too fat for me. Say. There's nothing for you to say. If I lose this client, not only is Miss Peterson fired, but I'm going to sue her. Goodbye. Mrs. O'Reilly! Mrs. O'Reilly! Hello, Jane. Where's Chicken? Al, let me ask you a sentimental question. Would you like to have Irma at your side through the years? <laughs> Couldn't think of anything better. Why? Well, save a space for her in the unemployment line. She lost her job. Lost her job? What's the matter with that girl? Is she going Hollywood? <laughs> Al, it's a long story. All I know is she just about lost her job. She hasn't got a nickel in the bank. She's wasted money on singing lessons, and she hasn't got a chance to win the contest. Now, Al, what are we going to do? Oh, wait a minute, Jane. I think I hear her coming. I'm just a prisoner of love. Chicken, your prison days are over. <laughs> Got a feeling you're about to be executed. Why, Al, what's happened? I'll tell you, Irma. I just had a talk with Mr. Clyde, and he's disgusted with you. You're just about to lose your job. And in that case, you're going to need that 30 bucks you spent for lessons to tide you over. 
So you got to go back to that Beethoven music school and cry for your money. Give him a real sob story. Oh, but I... Gosh, I, I wouldn't know what to say. Well, there's nothing to it. You simply say something like, uh, uh, you lost your job, and if you don't get the $30 back, you will have nothing to eat, and the children will starve. You got it, chicken? Oh, word for word. Good. <laughs> Let me hear it. All right, now let's see. Uh, I want the $30 back because I'm starved and I have nothing to eat but the children. <laughs> Hold it, chicken. You got the right words, but they sound like they went through the mix master. <laughs> oh, Al, you know she won't get it right. Besides, there are no refunds. Yes, and I'm determined to go through the contest. Okay, chicken. When our backs are against the wall and there ain't no time to stall, there's only one man to call. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Irma is entering a contest in the community center. How can I make sure she wins when she sings? Huh? You don't like people who sing? Well, why not, Joe? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Your brother did some singing to the district attorney, and they almost tracked your whole gang. <laughs> can understand your point. So I guess you can't help us, but thanks for the effort, and goodbye, noble friend. Hello, folks. Janie, the professor here told me you called me. Yes, I did, Mrs. O'Reilly. Mr. Sterling from the community sing call. He's going to audition all the applicants in this block, and he'll be here any minute. Any minute? Glory be. I'd better try my voice. Oh, la la. <laughs> oh, well, my notes seem to be nice and pear shaped. Why not? You're built like one. <laughs> Tattered old Tuscanini, you. Mrs. O'Reilly, please, I'm only fooling. You know that, to me, you look like a queen. Well, that's better. The Queen Mary in dried up. <laughs> now, listen here, you. Oh, please be still. Will you summons at the door? Come in. Good evening. I'm Mr. Sterling. Oh, yes, you call. I hope I'm not late. I've been listening to all the applicants on this block, and I must say, up to this point... 72nd Street has it all over, 73rd Street. Well, we're going to change that. Are you Irma Peterson? Oh, no, I am. Uh, but listen to Mrs. O'Reilly first, because I'm trying to memorize the words in my song. All right, Mrs. O'Reilly, what are you going to sing? Well, I was going to sing a little Welsh number called Lost in the Wilderness. Inspired by a visit to my room. <laughs> I'll sing the last rose of summer. Let's hear it. Well, here we go. Ready, Professor? Ready. Tis the last rose of summer. <laughs> Let him bloom alone. Oh. That's uh, very interesting. And, uh... <laughs> and now, Miss Peterson, uh, what are you going to say? Well, I was going to sing I'm Just a Prisoner of Love, but I forgot the words, so I'll sing uh, Onesie Twosie, because any child can remember that. I'll accompany you, my darling. You ready? One, two... Onesie Twosie, I'll kiss you, Z. Hey, Jane, what comes after Tuesday? <laughs> Try Threezy. Threezy? Jane, are you sure it's Threezy? Yes, didn't you just sing Tuesday? Yes, but I thought Wednesday came after Tuesday. <laughs> if you don't mind, Miss Peterson, I'll come back when you know what day it is. Goodbye. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, don't, don't cry her, madame. Well, please. she's got plenty to cry about. She spent her last $30. She's out of the contest. And to make things simply adorable, she's lost her job. But don't forget, she's still got me. That still leaves the score nothing to nothing. <laughs> This is the blackest day of my life. Oh, you always say that. Well, this is really dark black. <laughs> Come in. Oh, it, it, it's you, Mr. Clyde. Look, Miss Peterson, I'm a square dealing man, and I always say what's on my mind. That letter you sent to our client lost fifty thousand dollars in that case yesterday. Yes. Well, he just called me. He said he laughed at your letter so much he forgot his losses and gave me another case. What? And to show my appreciation, you're rehired, and here's a $50 bonus. Oh, I'm so happy I could see. You do, and I'll take back the money. Well, that's the end of Irma's musical career. Lily Pons can now breathe easy again. <laughs> and thanks to Mr. Clyde's generosity, Irma has $50. Irma, what are you going to do with the $50? Oh, I think we ought to get the piano back. I need it. Honey, you never touched the piano. What do you mean, you need it? Well, every time Al kissed me, I used to lean against the piano. Now I'm liable to fall out the window. <laughs> and you know something? She may fall out of the window head first, but believe me, she'll land on her feet if I know my friend Irma. Columbia Broadcasting System and has been rebroadcast to men and women overseas through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.
and Irma, created by Sky Howard, and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as James. Well, me, James Stacy, I've got to blast that theory wide open because it is not true. Take my roommate, Irma Peterson. A whole library could fall on her head and I could still prove there was nothing under all those covers. <laughs> what makes me so sure? Well, who else comes up with the kind of answers she does when you make a simple statement like the one I made the other day, for instance? Irma? Yes, James? You know, it says here that they found a tree with enough lumber in it to build a seven-room house. But Jane, in the wintertime when the leaves fall off, won't the roof leak? <laughs> well, I must say, my little roommate is making an all-out effort to improve herself since I threatened to walk out on her a couple of weeks ago. Jane? Yes, yeah, sweetie? Don't you think I'm doing much better than I used to? You certainly are, honey, and I'm proud of you. Especially the way you prepared dinner last night. The whole meal was piping hot, including the ice cream. <laughs> Irma, where did you get the idea of serving hot ice cream? Well, the recipe said to cover the ice cream with hot fudge. Yeah. So I'll cover the ice cream with a fudge and put it in the frying pan to heat it up. <laughs> Well, sweetie, I'll give you an A for effort. You'll be all right. Just don't try to do anything you don't understand. Hey, hello, Jane. Come in. Miss Irma Peterson. Oh, Miss Peterson. Who are you? George Clark. I represent Mrs. Higgins. I'm here to collect $50 for the damages you did to her car. Oh, I'm sorry. You have that Come on. Wait a minute. What have you been up to? Oh, it's nothing. Uh, good day, sir. Good Give me that. It's nothing routine. <laughs> nothing doesn't cost fifty dollars. What did you do? You borrowed Mrs. Higgins' car and wrecked it. Oh, oh, oh! And after all the lecturing I've given you, why did you borrow Mrs. Higgins' car when you don't know how to drive? Well, you told me never to be wasteful. Oh, man. what has that got to do with it? Well, someone gave me a ticket to a drive-in movie, and I had to have a car to get in. <laughs> Now, never mind all that. Just tell me who was at fault in the accident. The other person. I put my hand out for a right turn. Yeah. Well, I turned left, he hit me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You signaled for a right turn and turned left. Yes, and it wasn't easy. I had to slide across the seat and open the window so I could put my right hand out. <laughs> All, this. all you had to do was stay where you were and put your left hand out. Don't you grab my ice cream cone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell her about those 15 people you frightened to death. <laughs> well, you can't blame me. It's those stupid signs they have. Stupid signs? Yes, it's a safety zone. And when I drove into it to get out of the way uh, of all the traffic, the cop bailed me out. <laughs> so you tangled with the law, too. You're lucky he didn't give you a ticket. Oh, he couldn't. I don't have a license. <laughs> what is it? He was going to take me to court. What made him change his mind? I don't know. I offered to drive him there. <laughs> Look, I'm not interested in how it happened. All I want is my client's $50. But I don't have $50. Well, I'll give you 24 hours to get it. If you don't have it when I come back here, we start suit. Goodbye. Gosh, Jean, I, I, I guess you'll just have to let me have the $50. Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> but, Jean, you're my friend. You've got to help me out when I'm in trouble. Listen to me, Irma. I am through helping you out of the ridiculous situations you managed to get yourself into. Now, you are strictly on your own. That's a fine way to talk when I've been trying so hard to improve myself. You call this improving? Well, it could have been worse. I almost hit a big truck, but I stopped the car.
was just in time. <laughs> well, good for you. How did you manage to do that? I ran out of gas. <laughs> Please, Jane, you've got to lend me the money. No, not a chance, Cookie. I don't want to seem unreasonable, but this is unforgivable. Driving a car when you don't know how. You could have killed someone. No, no, Irma, this is your own party. But, Jane, when you're in trouble, I always help you. When was I ever in trouble? That time I set your dress on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I've made up my mind. It is all settled. I'm tired of being a mother to a girl my own age. Come in. Hello, girls. Hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, say, what's the matter with you girls? You sound like you've been quarreling. We have. I don't know what's the matter with Jane. Just because I made a little mistake, she's mad at me. A little mistake. Mrs. O'Reilly, all she did was to borrow a car when she doesn't know how to drive, doesn't have a license, and doesn't have money to pay the damages. Damages? Yes, yes. I've been telling her that she had no business borrowing a car when she's not a responsible person. Not responsible? I certainly am, and I have witnesses. You have? Yes, a policeman and a driver of the other car both said I was responsible. <laughs> <laughs> and now Jane won't help. Yes, yes. Yes, I need fifty dollars. Will you lend it to me? Well, if it's such an emergency, maybe I could. Oh, but now, Mrs. O'Reilly, before that big heart of yours begins to melt, let me tell you something. Irma will never learn to take care of herself as long as she knows that we will come to her rescue. Oh, Jane, how can you be so cruel? Well, Irma, I see what Jane's driving at, and maybe she's right. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to be very cocky, because I knew I could always run to my mother. But one day, something happened that changed all that, did you? Yes, I was trying to steal some honey out of a beehive, and the bees got mad and started to chase me. So I quickly ran and hid under my mother's foot skirt. But the bees followed me. <laughs> and from that time on, I was on my own. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kubatsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and I'm, a, I'm Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> my three little beauties. <laughs> you, Janie, with hair that shines like silk. Oh, thank you, Professor. And you, Irma. Oh, your hair is like a golden sunset. Thank you. And you, Mrs. O'Reilly? <laughs> yes, Professor. Ragma. <laughs> Upon your old reprobate shoes. Oh, now, please, Mr. O'Reilly, that's no way to talk to the man that's going to lend me fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> but tell me, what do you need fifty dollars for? Hey, for the car I re- How did you ever do such a thing? Whose car was? Well, it belonged to Mrs. Higgins, and, and I don't want to ask her for the money because she's mad at me already. Well, I'm a darling. I wish I could help you. Maybe if I hacked my face. Wait a minute. Uh, Wait. Wait a minute, Professor. You'll do no such thing. I'm trying to teach Irma to stand on her own two feet. And if you encourage her, all my work will be just for nothing. A fine friend you are, Jane, turning everybody against me. No, Irma, darling. What Jane is trying to do is for your own good. You know, a person's character is like a caution. If you want to take the easy way out, you can loosen it and relax. <laughs> but if you have real power and keep it real tight, you'll always be in good shape. The professor's right on <laughs> Many of the time I wanted to loosen a whalebone or two and relax. <laughs> By the looks of you, they must have loosened the whole whale. <laughs> with a built-in swimming pool. <laughs> oh, Jane, maybe we are being a little too hard on her. I have a few dollars saved look, enough. Look, 
Look, Mrs. O'Reilly, I have the money, too. But I refuse to let her get away with these things. She's just got to learn that money doesn't grow on trees. Speaking of trees, come on, Mr. O'Reilly. I want you to come up to my room and see if you agree with the birds. What do you mean, the birds? Well, a little robin was just about to build a nest on my windowsill. But her husband took one look at my room, looked at Mrs. Robin, and said, Come on, Mama, this is not the right place to raise a nice family. <laughs> and believe me, if I had wings, I would fly away, too. <laughs> Goodbye, Jenny. Priceless. 
What's that statue over there without the head? That winged victory. Well, if that's victory, I hate to see what the loser would look like. <laughs> Speaking of heads, Miss Peterson, uh, mine is getting a little tired. Why don't you join Mr. Clyde in the garden? You can go through here. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Clyde! Yes? Oh, it's you. You'd better get back in the house and get an umbrella. There's a woodpecker flying around. <laughs> Mr. Clyde, I simply must speak to you. Well, all right. Come over here. I'm planting some petunias. I want to cultivate the bed. Well, you can take your nap later. This is important. <laughs> I thought I was getting a day off. Let's go over here. You can talk to me while I work in the garden. Gee, you have a pretty garden. Did you plant it all yourself? Just about. With the exception of that old weeping willow. That was planted by my great-grandfather. Oh, Mr. Clyde, stop trying to kid me. How could an old man lift such a heavy tree? <laughs> <laughs> Look, will you just keep quiet while I plant? What did I do with the geranium slips? What? The little green things. There was a bunch of them right here. Oh, I've been eating them. I thought it was celery. Oh, no. <laughs> here, take these. What are they? They're Picaro tablets. <laughs> Why should I take them? They'll help you grow, you blooming idiot. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't stop crying. What is the matter with you, anyway? Oh, I'm going to cry. Now, if I don't pay for the damage, I'll have to go to jail. Jail? <laughs> oh, Miss Peterson, that's too bad. <laughs> then why are you smiling? Oh, was I? Mr. Clyde, it will only take $50. Will you lend it to me? Me lend you $50? Yes, you can take $5 a week out of my salary, and in five weeks it will be all paid back. <laughs> to think this is the girl who does my bookkeeping. <laughs> Miss Peterson, I can't lend you any $50. Why not, Mr. Carr? Because you have no business driving a car. But the accident wasn't my fault. Oh, it was. Well, I'm an attorney. I'll find out very quickly. Now, in which direction were you driving at the time of the accident? Frontwards. I know you were going to... <laughs> Now, uh, where did you get hit? In the rear. <laughs> the car. I feel fine. You were making a turn? Yes. Well, why didn't you see if the course was clear? Did you look in the mirror? I didn't have to. I got dressed before I left the house. <laughs> no, no, I, I can't believe this. Was there a traffic signal on the corner? Yes. What color was it? Red. And you went through it? No, I went around it. I hit the lamp post on the other corner. <laughs> Case dismissed. This is my question, Mr. Clyde. Can I have a person I get put in jail? Only if they rewrite the Constitution. <laughs> I wouldn't let you a nickel to get out of this. You're a menace to civilization. Well, if that's the way you feel, you can keep your money. I'll go to a finance company and borrow it. But you have no gratitude. What do you mean? Treating me like this. After what I've just done for you, peeling all these potatoes. Potatoes? Where? You moron, those are my prize valuable. Don't get out of here. <laughs> oh, look at those people. They're all coming out of that door crying. Uh, pardon me. Is there a funeral going on here? <laughs> no, miss. This is the Happiness Loan Company. Those people are crying with gratitude because we loaned them some money. Now, what can we do for you? Well, uh, I need $50. Do you think you can lend it to me? I believe we can. Your name? Erna Peterson. I live at uh, 8224 West 73rd Street. Fine. Have you any collateral? I've never been a sick day in my life. <laughs> oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> All right, miss. Just sign this. There you are. And here's your $50. Gee, this is easier than working for your money. You should live so long. Come in. Hello. 
Poor Jane. Mrs. O'Reilly just told me about the terrible news. What shall I do, Now, Professor? control yourself. You know I'm... Uh, too bad her last name isn't Hoover. We could rent her out for a vacuum. Oh. <laughs> and this paper she signed. And the way that man leered at me when he came to appraise our furniture. Now, take it easy. No. I had my lesson with those finance companies. I borrowed some money one time for plastic surgery. Did you have it done? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly I had it done. There must be somebody you can sue. <laughs> from a crooked loan company. What is my move? Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, but Joe, I like your boys to wreck the joint. Why? Because this outfit must be run by the most big, the crooked, the crummiest person that ever lived. The name? Happiness Loan Company. What, Joe? Well, Joe, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your mother's business. Joe, <laughs> Joe, wait a minute. take any more chances, I loaned her the $50. And to make sure she doesn't get in any more trouble, Irma is taking driving lessons. Sweetie? Yes, Jane? How'd your driving lesson go today? Oh, wonderful. I answered all the teacher's questions correctly. I learned all the safety laws, and I learned all the words on the eye chart right. Oh, that's fine. When do you take your next lesson? I don't know. I wrecked the teacher's car. <laughs> oh, you know, there's going to be another wreck. A nervous wreck. It'll be the girl that lives with my friend, Irma. 